and a statement. Okay, um, I'd like to call to order the uh, October 1st regular meeting of the Board of Select Persons for the Town of Belgrade. Um, if we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so um, Dan is out of town. He is not here, but we have four select persons. So that establishes our quorum. So we are legal. And um, I'd like to open the meeting with um, the public hearing on the general assistance ordinances, appendices A through H. I move that we open the meeting. Second. Okay, so the general assistance on, um, oh yeah, all in favor. I keep forgetting that. Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. I'll vote yes, so four yeses and one absent. So um, this is the Town of Belgrade General Assistance Changes Notice of Public Hearing. The Municipality of Belgrade Board of Select Persons will hold a public hearing on October 1st 2024 at 6 30 p.m. at the Belgrade Town Office as required by Maine State Statutes Title 22 MRSA 4305 subsection 4 for the purpose of public comment on the adoption of the model ordinance GA appendices A through H for the period of October 1st 2024 through September 30th 2025. The appendices are filed with the Department of Health and Human Services, EHHS, and may be reviewed at the Belgrade Town Office or online at www.townofbelgrade.com. So um, these have all been provided. Um, I would move at this time that we adopt the ordinances, the ordinance and the appendices as uh, published. If anybody has any questions on them, oh, and so I'll put a motion on the floor. Okay, so I'll second that. Second that. Okay, so are there any discussion or comments on from the floor? Do we have any highlights on what the differences are? I don't. They're I quite can't. lengthy. Um, usually they just increase uh yes. the maximums to adjust. For um, obviously costs. Cost, uh, cost, yeah, different. I see people. the mileage rate is now 50 cents per mile. I don't know what it was before. Well, on the but, first page of the memo, it says updates, and there's a paragraph <laughs> what was updated. Oh, okay. Imagine it's, that. <laughs> I remember reading through it. So it does say the overall maximums were updated, the food maximums, the housing maximum, and which is, uh, I'm sorry. So Appendix A, B, Appendix B, which is the food maximum, Appendix D, the housing maximum, and Appendix H, which is the funeral maximum of the general assistance ordinance. Uh, there is also a new recovery residence housing maximums guide. So, and is there any change in how we're reimbursed? No, not yet. <laughs> no, of course not, right? It, and um, I was looking at this, and, and it looked like there were uh, a distinction between metropolitan areas and non-metropolitan areas. And I think it seems to be falling in non-metro. And this feels right to me. I didn't know how the values. I was kind of looking at two persons in household column, or mm -hmm. that one, um, as kind of a way to gauge or assess. So I didn't know how different this is compared to previous values. Um, if it's way different, I was hoping someone would tell me if it's just a little different and maybe seems in line with maybe, you know, consumer price index sort of changes or other relative yeah. measures. Uh, does anybody have any idea? Well, and I, as I was going down through, I just flagged actually two bedroom in Kennebec County heated says 1191. <clears throat> 
And I can't think, because if you read at the beginning, it says on the respond, they should adopt, only consider adopting if these figures are consistent with local rent values. So is 1191 consistent with a two bedroom heated apartment available in the town of Belgrade? Well, it go, I think it goes by the county. Yeah, that's the county. It's got to go. Yeah. But it says, consider adopting if these figures are consistent with local rent values. If not, a market survey should be conducted and the figures altered accordingly. Mm -hmm. It must be presented prior to the adoption. Have we seen? It's a great question. Folks that have requested assistance, have we seen that what we're providing is adequate to cover what they need? Or is 1191 too low for this area for a two bedroom heated? I mean, we had when our rent person was here from Spectrum, she said she thought we were under market value mm -hmm. on the rents that we were charging, including heat and the facilities that we have. Not that I want to put more work on into a market survey, but. The, but the unfortunate thing from my viewpoint is that Belgrade out of the all the towns in the county may be a um, one area that, I don't want to say is inflated, but has more attention and more desire and more demand, right? Which would then up that price Versus compared to like, demand. right? Right, right, right. Which right. 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 might be adequate, right. right? And so making hitting that sweet spot and not overburdening the other taxpayers, right? right? Mm -hmm. How do we do that best? And um, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's any wiggle room in that. Uh, in these right. values at all. Well, only if we adopt different figures. Right, right which would follow an analysis and right. take and, and who's going to conduct that right. analysis right. so that we can be sure it's accurate. And you know, the prices in the summer in Belgrade are much higher than the prices summer in the winter. winter. So you have to back to that in. I would say the prices in the winter would be higher if they're including heat. Well, I mean, there's more demand in the summer. It depends on you know where the properties are. So. Oh, well, we think uh, I would assume we'd be doing general assistance if someone was renting a rental property seasonally in the town of Belgrade. Right? No, that wouldn't be kind of this would be year round rentals. If somebody would this cover if somebody was doing a winter rental where the person is gone for nine months, so they would have the rent for that period of time would it cover for that i mean i'm not familiar with how all of the general assistance stuff general works. assistance is meant for an emergency situation mm -hmm. it's right. not meant to provide long-term right. care right it's okay. meant like um We've done like cords of wood or a hundred gallons of oil or you know things like that. It's an emergency. They right. have no way um, to provide that for themselves. So mm -hmm. if they qualify, we can help with that. Um, same with a place to stay. It's an emergency. It would be an emergency situation. It's not for an extended period of time. Okay. And the qualifications are based on income. There's, there, yes, the, there's a lot of factors. Yes, but is it income provided by the state that gives us the factors we work off for qualification? Um, the application requires quite a bit of information. Right, but I mean the 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 numbers we're using are basically set by the state. These are set by the state. Yes, okay, you that, are correct. That's what I was. Yes, to. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. And and so, do I understand that we are reimbursed by the state for yes, general 70, assistance? Yes, seventy percent. Seventy percent. Yes. Okay. And so, if we increase the amounts, then we would the town would be responsible for that increase Correct. because yes. the town, the state would only reimburse seventy percent of their establishment. Right. Their establishment. Okay. Pardon me. One more question. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, last year, uh, did we? 
go through the entire GA account? No. Like, so, no. So. It's um we have we have had several applications, but not everyone qualifies. Okay. So therefore, um from my perspective, based on what I've seen for this data and what I'm understanding how this is based, uh, I would still be in favor of adopting what's in front of us what's in front of without change. Um, I understand, Melanie, what you're talking about, because there are there will be instances where people may need more than what it shows. Right. But, um, that, that's just what I'm coming from. Yeah, we do right. have a couple of stock gaps in the town of Belgrade where we do provide one time 100 gallons of heating oil, one time electrical assistance. Right, I see. So we do have a couple of accounts set up for that. I just want to be sure that then we're making sure that it's adequate. And I think we've I think we've almost used those separate accounts more than the general assistance because oftentimes people don't qualify for right. the general, general assistance, assistance is but really we're able to help them yeah. with those separate accounts. Right. Right. That's because these are so low. The the threshold it's most people exceed the threshold of this. It's, GA. There, there are a lot of factors. I'll okay. just say that it's okay. just it's difficult. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if we are concerned, as Melanie mentioned, that these numbers might be not be enough, maybe we could. We have to approve this every year. That they're, they're correct. Ranges, right? Yes, so, you are correct. So we could approve it now for this year, and then take the time to make sure so that they, for next they year. Care. Um, you know, that, that we feel, I mean, it'll change by the state, but they probably right. wouldn't change that much. And so it might make sense for us rather than to delay this since it is effective as of today, today yeah, versus yeah. September, yeah. that we approve it now. And then over the course of the next year, this coming year, look at what the, um, you know, how closely this correlates to what we have in Belgrade. And then we have a public hearing prior, a full further prior to the date of adoption. Yeah. We should have done this at the beginning of September. Yeah. Um, we didn't get these figures um, until, well, this says uh, September 4, but we didn't get it September 4. So we did we get it after our it, was it, it was late. It was late. 824 is when I might have a question about it. We didn't get these. They were very late getting getting these out to us. So they were prepared by MMA, but they weren't public. No, in the MMA. state. Oh, the state. Yeah, it was prepared by MMA eight twenty twenty four. Oh, that's by MMA. Right. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, but by the time they get them out and printed and distributed and to us, it sounds like we will pass. But we can put that on us on a list for next August to yep. be asking about where we are. Yeah, maybe just check with the folks that do have rentals and we don't have a lot of rentals in the town of Belgrade, but there are a handful that I would employ right about the back. Mm -hmm. So just to be sure that <clears throat> we're alive. Um, any other questions or comments on this? Okay, all in favor of adopting it as published Barbara? Yes. Peter? Yes. Melanie? Yes. And I'll vote yes. Four yes and one absent. And if you put this on a tickler file for next year? Yeah, I just order. made myself a note. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Um, so um, I move that we close public hearing. Second. All in favor, Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. And I'll vote yes. And now we'll get into the public comment section of the select board meeting. For those of you who are not here and, um, and aware, um, at each select board meeting, we allow a, a brief time in the beginning of the meeting for folks to, to uh, bring something to the attention of the board that they feel we should uh, know. Um, in general, we do not act on it at the meeting. Um, it comes to our attention if it, we feel it needs further action, then we put it on a follow up for the next meeting or the, whatever that time frame allows. So with that um, comment, um, 
Is there anyone here who has anything in public comment they'd like to bring to the attention of the board? Anyone? Okay, Scott. Oh, Scott. Okay, Scott. Yeah, uh, Scott Ferguson down the road. Um, I, it wasn't supposed to be me speaking, but Skip Bessie couldn't make it tonight. Okay. Um, the uh, Lakes Christian Fellowship would like to change their sign. Um, there's already a footprint for the sign. They just want to take out the old uh, insert the letter type thing and put in an electronic sign. But apparently there's an ordinance from the uh, town line to here or to Christie's and then it stops and then it goes all the way down to Generators Main and begins again and goes into the uh, Bellray Lakes. So um, we just wanted to make you aware that um, I know Skip's looked into the law and I think there's an application and things like that. But um, I think, um, you know, we just didn't want to do it. <laughs> and uh, we wanted you guys to know what uh, we were planning. Um, it's a type of thing where uh, you can program it and it can shut down at a certain time and then start back up at a certain time. So it wouldn't be running all night long uh, if that's a, an issue. Um, but um, it would just make it a lot easier, we think, to reach the community um, and easier to change than going out in the winter time and changing the letters and the sign. Mm -hmm. um, so I uh, just want to bring it to your attention. I think Skip is going through the process, um, but um, I think what would probably happen if the variance is required, it'd probably come to you guys anyway. Um, so I don't know who what the variance process is. <laughs> But he knows more about it, but he's, he's a football coach, so he got tied up. Oh, okay. So he couldn't make it. But, um, you know, I apologize for only giving you partial information, but uh, uh, we'll try to get him here at some point when he can talk about the whole thing. But just wanted to make you aware of uh, what our request is. And, um, you know, hopefully you guys realize we're willing to work with the community, always have been. Uh, even when we rented the center for all season, we paid to use it. Um, because we felt we wanted to be part of the community, not, you know, just sort of be like a freeloader type thing. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's, uh, the request sort of, um, and, uh, again, I apologize, Skip's not here. He'd have more information on it. So, uh, okay. if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think, uh, we do have a process. I believe this has to go to planning board. Uh, yeah. So we'll go to the planning board Honestly. and then eventually yeah. Yeah. Would, would come back around, but. But thank you for bringing that to attention. And yeah, just so you're aware of it, uh, that, we, we do realize that the planning board probably would bring it back to you folks. Mm -hmm. um, so just want to make you aware of it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, any other, anyone else has something you want to bring to the attention of the board? Okay. All right, uh, next um, I move we approve the minutes of September 17th, 2024, as 16, well as 16, 17th. 17. Oh, it says 17 here. Okay. 16, 17, and 18. Do we have the 16th as well? Okay, yeah, I don't have it on this one. So, okay, the 16th, the 17th, and the 18th. And the 18th. Okay. Um, let's approve them one at a time. Because yeah. we have the so meeting. we approve the meeting minutes from the September 16, 2024, so the board special meeting. I'll okay. I'll second that. Okay. Is that in our what was on the table here? Yes. What is the motion? To approve the minutes, approve for the minutes from the 16th? From September 16th. You should have them maybe on the table. They were on the table. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, and say so we looked at this one. Okay. Um, any discussion of the minutes of the 16th? No. All in favor, Melanie? Yes. Oh, Peter? Yes. No, I didn't have a second. I did. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Did Thank it, yeah. you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Melanie, Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. And I'll vote yes. So that approves the minutes from the 16th with a vote of four uh, yeses, one absent. Okay, now I move we approve the minutes of September 17th, 2024. Okay, um, and looking through it, did anyone come up with any 
minor thing. So Louis Hazlitt's name is should be corrected. I'm thinking this. There's an L that should be in there somewhere. Um, um, so where I am is on page one, right below where it says motion to open public hearing for John Care permits by Carol Johnson, second Oh uh, yeah, it's it's yeah. correct. It's correct up above under her name. Press her name is Press. Yeah. Yeah. So this should be left to a second. So Hayes left. Yeah. L after the so in the first line under motion to open public meeting, right. Hazlet needs to, the spelling of Louis Hazlet needs to be correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Very minor. Okay. Anything else? The um executive session, uh, page five. Mm -hmm. Okay, exit executive session. Okay, so we would have got we went into regular session at nine oh eight. We did it at the same right immediately. Okay. Oh yes. And I motioned, and did you second that, Peter? I did. You did. Okay. And this is on Tuesday. This is on Tuesday night, so no action was taken. Okay. Motion to um, adjourn the. Because we took action on Wednesday, correct? Right. Yes. Correct. So motion to adjourn at nine oh nine. Okay. And seconded by and Melanie. Melanie always I think. <laughs> Melanie. <laughs> I'm always ready yeah. to adjourn. She's always ready to adjourn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So we have that that uh, correction. Um. Any other discussion? Okay. Yeah. So can we have a vote to approve the minutes? Um, we'll approve them as amended second. first. We need to second that. All in favor of the amendment. Melanie, Peter, yes. Barbara, yes. myself. Four yeses, one absent. And now to approve the whole minutes as amended. Second. second. Yeah, then Melanie. Yes. Yeah, Peter. Yep. Barbara. Yes. Carol. Because you had to approve the amendments amended. and then approve the amended minutes. Gotcha. Good point. Wow. <laughs> You guys are a little nutty, but it's yeah. okay. Okay, and then uh, I move we approve the minutes for the Board of Select Persons special meeting on September 18th. Second. Okay. So um, are these correct? Anything? I think we're all set. Yep. Okay. All in favor? Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. And I'll vote yes for the four yeses. One absent. Okay, I move we open unfinished business. Second. Okay, the first thing under unfinished uh, business is the junk junkyard permit renewal by Francis Frapier. Uh, we did have a public hearing at the last meeting. Um, the board approved and issued one permit at its September seventeenth meeting for Raymond Frapier. Am I pronouncing that right? Frappier? Frappier. Okay. Sound didn't sound right to me. Yeah. Uh, reviewing, taking comments during the public meeting on the renewal for Francis Frappier, also who was not able to attend the meeting. Code Enforcement Officer Hans Rasmussen visited the property of Francis Frappier and provides the following. Francis has facilities on both sides of Oakland Road. This past year, he has removed inventory from both sites and is keeping both sites in compliance. There were no notice of violations issued to Francis. Uh, I recommend the renewal of his application and the is from Hans uh, Rasmussen. Um, Francis, do you have anything you want to say or any no. comment? If he approved it, I got no problem. No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you were saying you didn't think you should. <laughs> any comments or questions from the board? Nice job. He's still clean. Uh, yeah. And thank okay. you for your work on, on, on those things. Yeah. Yeah. So I move we approve the permit for Francis Frappier. All in favor. Is urgent second. second. All in favor. Melly? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. I'll vote yes. So that's four yeses, one absent. And it's okay. all right. We leave. No, no. Once you come here, you have to stay. Yeah, I didn't even 
Yes, you may yeah. leave. If, <laughs> if you just don't want to stay in our presence any longer, you may leave. <laughs> well, we're the best race, so we're one of those. Understood. <laughs> hey, thank you okay. so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. I want to get out and pour the bucket to water. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next order of business is the short term rental ad hoc committee um, direction and charge. Um, and we do have in our on your uh, table. Right. So in our in our book we have that uh, this was established. We have minutes from what, February 20th, yeah. uh, considering the setting up of an ad hoc committee to review ordinances, short term rentals. The board discussed what the committee might look like in terms of membership and goals, uh, along with a suggested list of potential members, such as code enforcement officer, planning board member, select board member, lakes and natural resources committee member, comprehensive plan member, two community members, someone from Seven Lakes or Lake Association, someone who is Lakesmark certified, and one local realtor or pop possibilities. The board agreed the focus should be on the shoreland zone ordinance short-term rentals and to protect our wetlands. Uh, select boards will each send a list of who they envision the committee to focus to the town manager to compile, and this will be taken up in April. And then we were provided today with the minutes from the April meeting. April 2nd. April 7th meeting, which- yeah, April 2nd. 2nd? Yeah, I put that, I put the, just the, it's on the third page, but I put the first page behind it just so you would know. Okay. So you would... the so page that... three of six. Okay. And so the first part of it is what you already read from right. the... February twentieth. I know, Paula. <laughs> yes. And then the second part is what we discussed on April second, since we had already divided the committee. Into right. two parts. We had already charged the Lake and the Lake. Natural Resources Committee <clears throat> with the environmental piece. And so uh, we focused on April 2nd on the discussion around short term rentals and what that committee should do. So that's right. what we talked about then. So I should so, read this second piece in here with the Lakes and Natural Resource Committee working on the environmental piece discussion centered around short term rentals. Charge would be to look at the pros and cons of regulating all short term rentals. Uh, not just properties in Shoreland Zone, to look at septic systems, the number of people staying, look at what other towns do, to include two community members and the realtor who handles rentals to the committee, survey the entire town, how do we balance the need to protect the environment and way of life with the rights of property owners, build a list of rental properties for the office, do's and don'ts, Regulation and enforcement, we would need to add staff as the CEO could not handle this additional workload alone. Um, increases in solid waste and burdens on road duration and expand transfer station hours. The board will forward names again to the town manager for consideration. And I guess that's all we have on that page. Right. So um, it looks like we, we have enough of a charge of what we'd like the committee to do unless we want to um, reevaluate that, either add or remove anything. And um, one thing that jumps out of me, Carol, I know what some other towns do, and I know this is this is going to be a touchy subject um, for a lot of folks. But in order to have a list in the town office of who is renting their property, some towns do a fee. Mm -hmm. So you if, you, if your intention is to rent your personal property, your home or your second home or whatever to someone, then you have to actually have an application on file with the town of Belgrade so that if there's an issue, the citizens can contact the town for follow-up. Mm -hmm. And I know that that's one, and you know, if there's a nominal fee or that's a fee structure that we may also want to consider. I think that I think that would be part of what the committee would look at is to see. Do we want to have that in here? What is bill? Oh, to do isn't, that. Isn't that number one? Pros and cons of regulating all short-term rentals. I don't know that I would consider those. Or maybe say including oh, just, costs, maybe right, or including you know, 
if there's a cost to the town to be able to run those, because right. it might mean more for the code enforcement officer, what are those other pieces that we may run into? So what if we said um, registering rental properties? In including registration of properties and costs, or just included that in the first one when looking at the pros and cons? Because yeah. it is a very touchy subject. And I know I'm thinking either Waterville or Augusta recently talked about registering all their rental properties. And I think really? at one point it was defeated and then maybe it came back up again, but it is an ongoing issue in areas where they have a lot of rentals. And I think I think we need to be aware of it and have our committee address it. And, and then well, anything that comes out of that will at least be um, an informed decision that we've looked at that piece. And so I think, yes, maybe we should include that, so. And and I think when we're talking about build list of rental properties for the office do's and don'ts, I think that was a list of what rental properties uh, or what what the owners of rental properties should encourage their tenants to be doing and building, you know, right, right. <laughs> doing and not doing. I think that's I think that that's what it was. It's, build right. build a list of the do's and don'ts for rental properties yeah. so that they know when when you know what to take to the transfer station, when to take it and right. you know whatever else, <laughs> you know, I, I think that's it's, what that's supposed to mean. Yeah. I when I first was looking at that bulleted item, I thought, oh, building a list of rental properties. And then after I read the entire thing, I thought, oh, it's the do's and don'ts. That's the list. Right. Yeah. That's the list. So it, it, was, it was a, uh, I don't know who yeah. said it or how it came out, but it's, yeah. uh, right. it's the way we speak sometimes. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and I do know that I had talked to um, someone who does a lot of rentals or, you know, summer rentals in the area, but does not live in Belgrade. As a business in Belgrade does work in Belgrade, and um, that person had indicated they would be willing to uh, be a resource to the committee, you know, but to not be on the committee if they had no vote. And since they're not a Belgrade resident, they could not vote. And uh, but that person has um, a pretty extensive list of what she tells the people that she rents for, you know, the owners. Here's here's what we do. We do this and we do that. We so there's the, it's not like we'd be reinventing the wheel. I think we could look to resources like that to find a lot of those things that are you know pretty well established and for people who run a really a really well run rental business, um, they have it pretty well down. I think so. And that person did say they would be or they would would help in giving their their expertise, but they weren't looking to be a regular member and meeting regularly if they have to vote, mm -hmm. which I can respect their feeling on that. Great. So, um, any so, so do we want to make any changes to this? Or, I mean, I think it's important that this committee get going because, yes. you know, we've been talking about this since February and right. then April, and now yeah. it's Now we're October. getting ready to go into another season. So, so. and we have five people. Um, on the committee, Peter would be a non-voting member. Right, and I believe we received another application. Okay, no. the person that I know that is going to go on the committee needs to get an application. Said to me, <laughs> the application is done, I will drop it off at the town office, I thought, on Monday. So, okay. But, so, so, I hope that that person does drop something off yes. very soon so we can get have a full complement of people right. and then get going on this. Um, I think that this is an ample list. I would have been hesitant to add anything more. Oh, no, I was talking about should we take anything off? Right, right. right. Yes, yeah, so I was trying to put it in context. And, and if you take off anything, anything that's that's too big, uh, I don't know if there's anything that's too big. Um, I mean, survey, the, survey the, the entire, entire town, town. That's a pretty big yeah. bullet. Uh, that might be hard hard to actually accomplish in right. a short amount of time. Okay. Right. So if I, if I were to suggest anything right now, I would say to strike survey the entire town. Because we would have to... Should be doing yeah right because we would have a public hearing if this is if right. this, if this is an ordinance becomes an ordinance so it would have to be a public hearing anyway, um, and then the other question is how does this fit in with the recommendations from the comprehensive planning you know is it getting started too late 
to have any, right. um, you know, um, any role as far as as far as right. a comprehensive plan. Now, I do, I do think in survey the entire town might be corrected or something to advise the uh, advise the the town's people that we are looking at this issue, so that oh. people had concerns and knew what was going on, as opposed to survey the that's a just. That's like, but you I have to go get them back. But isn't that the job of the select board? If the committee reports to us, shouldn't we be the ones to get the word out? Or, I mean, I, I, it seems like it's a burden on the committee if they have to not only do what they're doing, but also communicate well, to their family. Well, I guess I, I guess I would look at it that whichever way it really, we would be looking to put it out on, on Facebook and some of our media and put it in, in the next newsletter that this is an ongoing work for that committee. So it's not so much that they're they're out there driving it, but they make sure that it's acknowledged. And and maybe that's just part of what we do. We don't need we can strike the survey the entire town or I mean I don't think the late the, the parallel committee to this is the Lakes and Natural Resources Committee. Right. And they're not surveying the town. They're not I mean that you know we Lauren has publicized all of their meetings and agendas and so forth, mm -hmm. yes. um, and so people can come and comment. Right. But the committee itself isn't charged with charged with doing the communicating yeah. their their meetings and so forth to the town. I don't think okay. any any no, I, committee has signed that. Yeah. You know. Do do we explicitly yeah. state clearly somewhere to say that this committee should report back to the? Select board. select board. Yes, because I mean, do we say simply that? A, they're an ad hoc committee whose charge is to compile the results of their research and present that to the select board, and then we and that would come back. Our decisions. Yeah. Oh, I, understand. I I agree and totally understand, but are we saying that explicitly? Right. In right. That's I was like, well, yes, we should. We say should say just should like say. That. Yeah, because yeah. I, I, I think that would then lay it very clearly out for that group. So mm -hmm. if we could add that. Take, take away survey. Take survey the entire town. So no net gain or gain right. of bulleted items. And I guess, you know, at the end, the increases in solid waste and burden on roads and expand transfer station hours. I don't know if this committee is necessarily, if that's the responsibility of this committee to really try to grapple their hands around short term rentals mm -hmm. right. and what the size of it is. Right. And whether, whether the transfer station can figure out if you know, I, I I don't know that the those last two are. So and I don't feel like, and that's why I wanted just to bring this back for the charge because we really do need to clarify. Yeah. Um, not necessarily an expansion of the transfer station hours, but one of the one of the concerns that has come up is that when folks are being asked to vacate the rentals. Is generally on a day when the transfer station isn't open. So if they're renting Sunday to Friday, they're either leaving the trash, they're disposing of it in places where they're not supposed to. So that those were some of the concerns that there's no way for them to take their refuge, refuse to the transfer station if the transfer station is open limited hours. Okay. Nine times out of ten, the landlords are bringing it up, and I hear them cursing the whole time. They left all this stuff for me. Right, right, right. So I think that was the piece of the expansion of the transfer station hours, or and it is there. How do we navigate that? Because that's to me, that's the owner's responsibility. Right, and that's not our charge here. And that's not our charge in trying to figure out how to manage them. And most of the rentals are Saturday. You come in Saturday after three and you leave by 10 or 11 on Saturday morning. And they have, they turn them over. Either they have a, a group short of term. cleaners, oh, short term, term. right. Yeah. They have a short term people that come on the cleaner and the owner knows either how it picked up or that's the responsibility of the owner to make sure it's taken care of. If the owner puts it on the, on the tenant, then that's, that's the owner's piece. But um, I, I Couldn't know. that be part of the do's and don'ts list? It could yes. be part of the do's and don'ts yeah. list. Yeah. 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 Right. And I think um, in the charge, we say include two community members and the realtor who handles rentals. Now, we have a realtor where Richter is a realtor, 
she doesn't handle rentals as a realtor per se, but she does, she's involved with the rental property at Pinkham's Cove. So right. and she ran rentals at Pinkham's Cove for a long time. So I don't think that we need to get hung up on no. whether, um, maybe we should just say, and a realtor, I'm not necessarily a realtor who handles rentals. Right, because, because she doesn't currently in her capacity as a realtor. So, and the right. person who does handle real realtor realist rentals, sorry, is not a Belgrade resident. So. Right, the one who handles, I think, the majority is not a Belgrade resident. So, can we just say and a realtor? I think that would be I can, fine. So we don't hold, yeah, you know, we don't tie the hand to the because we have two community members. We have a realtor. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Anything else? I mean, regulation enforcement, we will need to add staff. I think, is that, is, well, it's a yeah, consideration. Well, and I, yeah, I don't know that that's a given. I don't I know that that's a like charge. Just let's come up with a solution and then yeah, you figure out how to I think it's more like a, would we? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right. You know, I mean, if there's shoreland zoning violations and somebody's there for a month and they haul in the sand, right? Yeah, <laughs> trouble. <laughs> right. CEO. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think maybe that is, you know, not a, we don't need to make that a specific piece if that. Mm -hmm. I mean, the septic systems right I think are key, but the um, Lakes and Natural Resources Committee is also looking at septic septic systems. But they're only looking at in the shoreland in zone. the shoreland zone, mm -hmm. right? Right. Because one of the concerns we had was that someone was renting a property for 10 people with a seven for four. Right. Right. And, and by registering, one of the things that, that registering and or regulating rentals could do would be to require a septic inspection Section. periodically or um, the septic, the size of the septic system is determined by the number of bedrooms. And, and Every property should have a record of the size of the septic system relative to the number of bedrooms. So that's a fairly easy way to see what the capacity of the property should be. If you have two bedrooms and a septic system that accommodates two bedrooms, you shouldn't have 12 people staying there. Well, that that's where your problem is. And it may be that you have to have a caveat put in somewhere that in short-term rentals that you also need to include a lot, which is not a bedroom or pull out couch in the living room, which is not a bedroom. So it may be that they come up with some caveat that says in short-term rental, when you're looking at septic, you need to look at how many people you sleep, which is what you're advertising. Sleeps 12, two bedrooms. Mm -hmm. And that and that's part of the piece that I think- Is the problem. Is the problem. <laughs> because it's over capacity of right. the septic system. So, but, if you're if the only way you're determining septic systems is by bedrooms, you're defeating the purpose of where this is going. So I think that's something the committee needs to look at is and it I have no problem having it be a subsection of something. In this situation, this is how we're going to determine it. So we make sure we don't have 12 people in a in a four in a four people septic. Right. So okay. um are Anything we, else? Are we striking the last two bullets? Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And then we we um, and we're taking regulation and enforcement. We're not. They're not really going to look at. Well, they would because if we if we if they there are many towns that do regulate and then if you regulate you have to enforce. So if if we decide to regulate, then there would we need, need a to recommendation. Be, there would need to be. I mean, they could make a recommendation that we regulate or not. Right. And if, if we do, if they do make a regulation that we regulate. Then, or even register, right? Then who's going to make sure that that gets done? And right, you know, is is the, the, is the fee going to be adequate for any additional personnel that may be required to make sure this happens? So, right. well, I wouldn't I wouldn't strike it, but I think okay. I think they need to look at all the options. Okay. Okay. Anything else anyone has? So Peter, as the select board liaison, liaison <laughs> would you work with, would you be the one to work with Lorna to okay, get this going? Yeah. Yep. And I mean, since there are only four voting members, it would be important to get this other this person, person on. on. Yep. Right. <clears throat> and uh, I thought 
was I was hoping it was going to be here tonight that came in today so we could vote on it. I see it's not so, but but I mean it'll take a you know a couple of weeks, a couple of weeks sure. to get yeah. to get a meeting date and yeah, try all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, so yeah by that time maybe the this other person will have materialized. Let's yeah. hope so. So okay. what about the other folks? Who is the comprehensive plan committee? No, that a lot of those people were from the um. Um, from the lakes, that was when it was the the lakes committee. That was when it was going to be shoreland zoning and short term rentals all in one committee. Okay, so you don't think that having someone on this committee within the conference of planning committee would be beneficial? Um, I think we just need to get going. I think we need to get going. Yeah. Well, maybe we need to get going, but still advertise that. Yeah, people we yeah. Like to be we can always add more members you know, right. if we feel we need to or people have an interest. Yeah. So is everyone sufficiently satisfied with what's here? Yeah. Yes. We'll get this. We'll see what it yeah. looks like when it's cleaned up. Get it cleaned up and, <laughs> and yeah. you can start with getting seeing when people can meet and yep. have time and and by next meeting, we should be further down the road of rock and rolling. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Gotta try. Gotta try. Okay. Now he will be happy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the next item for discussion under unfinished business is bids for the maintenance garage slab. Um, Lorna, are, do you want to speak to this? Or um, sure. Uh, we sent out the RFP with a DV. Uh, September 24th, <clears throat> we did receive two uh, bids, one from Bellevance Construction, which is here in Belgrade, for $25,350, and one from Concrete and Jacking out of Oakland for $19,250, included the RFP and both of those uh, bids for you to take a look at. Uh, Corey's here, um, and he may know obviously more about the two different companies. I do not know them. <laughs> I've never dealt with either one of them. Yeah. So no. I have not. Um, I real, hear real good things about Elevance, real thorough. Yeah, I hear good things about Elevance. So, I'm the first I mean, can't speak to. I know this for the price difference, mm -hmm. but I, uh, from what I gather, the quality is at least there also. So in, in I'm trying to, you know, they're a little different. Are these when you go through them exactly the same? Scope yeah, they're before? right from the. Okay, because the, uh, they they spell them out a little differently. A little different, I, I okay, but. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. there's a significant difference in price. Yeah, that has me concerned. Oh, oh Scott, I'm sorry. If they don't meet the requirements of the RFP, then they should be excluded. So they should be identical. They do, they do, they do. that's what they're saying. It's just, when they typed it up, they, they just stated that I'm trying to compare and it looks to me like they're the same, but I wanted someone to say, because I didn't know what a 12 inch punch was. Yeah. <laughs> right? I, uh, Scott? And, uh, also, I would make sure that someone does an inspection throughout the process. I've been involved with RFPs where the job gets done, nobody really goes and checks it. Mm -hmm. And then you got problems. So, uh, right. just be right in your code enforcement officer, I'm sure, is more than capable, but. He should be involved in the process. Absolutely. Um, so, so does Central Maine Concrete and Jacking have any um, letters of reference or anybody to speak to the quality of their work? Yes, they did. They didn't provide it. Okay. I don't think either have provided anything. I, mean, I just have a the great bone. You can tell about it. Well, well, yes, it be it, I, I think Bruce might have an opinion on this. Yeah. 
Shockingly. <laughs> I'm not talking now. Bruce, are you familiar with Bella Vance? Maybe Bruce fell asleep. Yeah. He's still on mute. He, He's still on mute. He may be struggling with that. I think, I think Mary's helped him in the past. <laughs> So, right? I mean, you know, hello. Yes. Um, um, so, so go ahead, Scott. I'm sorry. Um, in in RFPs that I've been involved with, um, it usually you ask for projects that they've worked on. Mm -hmm. So you have some sort of idea of right. prior work, and uh, I think letter of recommendation too is is important to be asked for in the RFP itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't, though. so we didn't ask for that. I don't think it yeah, was, no I think you could still, if they're interested in the work, they would provide it. Bruce is trying to unmute, he said. Okay, okay. I mean, <laughs> while we're waiting, I mean, I look at it. Look up Central Maine Jacking on Facebook, and I do, there is no negative comments about right. their work on Facebook, mm -hmm. which not that that's a... Is this time for the people that we complain? Is this time critical that we do it before our next meeting? Because my concern yeah, is... We probably could do next meeting. I guess I mean, my concern is there's a substantial difference in price. And if we ask them to give us some recommendations, you know, um, for our consideration, because there is a substantial difference in price. If it was a thousand dollars, to me that's one thing. I know this person. I know so and so that used him, and this one and this one. But we don't. We don't have. Uh, for me, I don't have enough background to. There he is. The one. There's there he is. <laughs> okay, I figured it out. Sorry about that. So, um, the biggest thing is is with Bell Vance. He was our um, plowed our roads for several years. He's done several projects for the town. Um, uh, and you know i have worked on projects with the other contractor and i can tell you a finished project the finished job was not a good finished project um it was very rough that's about all i can say is you know i've you know i just did a project with them last last summer and it was a very rough project the floor was very uneven very rough the walls are very rough so that's about all I can say on the other contract of my experience. And like I said, Belvance Construction has done several projects for the town of Belgrade. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bruce. Yeah. He's tech savvy now. Yeah. <laughs> he is. So, so uh, would would the board feel comfortable in getting uh, waiting to the next meeting to? See if we can get a letter of recommendation, or is one person's recommendation sufficient to make a decision? I would think since we've opened it up in a public meeting, that maybe we would be requesting references and right. maybe some pictures of finished projects that we should go ahead and do that and request it of both parties. Right. Right. Agreed. Comparable jobs. Comparable jobs, and right. maybe ask that that Corey check them out. You know, like. Can they can send us pictures, but to make sure the pictures are what are matching, just to make sure that we do that. I would be much more comfortable doing that, especially where there's such a difference in pricing. We can do that. Okay. All right. So, thank you. Laura, I'll make that motion. Okay. And I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Barbara? Yes. Peter? Sure. Yeah. Melanie? Yes. Carol? Well, yes. Yeah. So, four yeses, one out. So, let's get to and we will look to uh, wrap this up at our next meeting with uh, and make decisions at that time. We, we do want to make progress. We just want to we just, oh, okay. Is this something that we hope to get done this fall? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. timing is important. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we're not going to get snow till February now. So what's the difference? Right. right? right. Just Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, right. <laughs> tomorrow. Oh, come on. Okay. Um, moving on. I move we open new business. Second. Okay. And the first thing under new business is the monthly department presentation of, from the Belgrade Public Library, our librarian, Jared Bond. All right. Ooh, I'm <laughs> scared to give a, a short little 
state of the library, talk about what we've been doing this past year. Um, we entered the third year of a couple of our uh, programs that we do every year, such as the community read and book bingo, um, and also summer reading. Uh, for book bingo, we handed out like 20 or so um, book bingo boards. It's just a piece of paper. It's not actually yeah. a board of anything. Uh, we had seven people finish that, which is reading 21 books over the course of like two months, which is History. like an accomplishment in my opinion. What's the age group that's doing? That is uh, for adults. So that's like. Oh, that's an adult? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and books. Yeah. Ooh. You, you got a lot of readers in town. Short stories. I did a lot. <laughs> um, our summer reading program is 40 books to complete that one. So No kidding. Yeah. And is that and wow? We had 20 people sign up for that and 10 of them finished. So what's the prize? We do have some decent prizes. I go and get like a, we have a basket full of like ten dollar toys that people get to pick up. They do 40 books over the course uh, of the summer. And this is adults as well. For kids? That one's for kids. Oh, this is for kids. That's the summer reading. So that's like for you know, Oops. keeping them fresh over the summer okay. for actual. I love to hear that. It's so good to that hear. is great. Yeah, yeah. And I'm always you know, blown away that they're reading 40 books. That's so many books. Yeah, right. It's more than I read it, so that's for sure. Um, Don't tell the kids, though. <laughs> <laughs> so I read 41. Yeah, right. Yeah, right, right. Well, the books I read tend to be a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we did our community read as well. We chose the book, The Frozen River. Um, it was very popular. Uh, very popular throughout the state as well this year. Um, that was about, gosh, I can't remember. What's yeah, why, why don't you talk about your personal experience? <laughs> I did not read it. <laughs> it's not my favorite genre. Yeah, midwives. Yeah. yeah. Martha, Martha Ballard. Ballard. Martha Ballard. Martha Ballard. Martha Ballard. That is her name. It's yeah. about Martha Ballard, and it's kind oh. of a fictional account of her. Uh, solving, a yeah, solving a mystery in uh, yeah, oh, well. 1700s. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, we shared for two programs with the Center for All Seasons. Um, we did, we had a magician, his name's Peter Boy, he came and did a bunch of illusion sleight of hand stuff in the summer camp kids. They absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then a couple weeks later, we had Walter Dunbar who is, uh, he has a program called World Class Frisbee Shows. And he's talking about the history of Frisbees and then kind of showing how basically you can make a Frisbee out of anything that looks like a Frisbee. He had like a <laughs> giant sled that he used as a Frisbee and then like tiny little Pringles can toppers. Cool. Oh. Yeah, it was fun. And then he, uh, and then he did like a 30 minute kind of class with each of the, well, we split, since there were so many kids, there was like 85 kids, we split them into two groups. Yeah. And uh, he did two little practice sessions with teaching them how to like, you know, spin a Frisbee around on their head, spin it on their <laughs> finger, stuff like that. Trick, Frisbee trick shots. <laughs> uh, and yeah, our, you know, working with, with Dan, Mm -hmm. Excellence energy. It works very well for us. He gets a program out of it. We get great attendance at our programs. Mm -hmm. um, we had Ron Joseph come and he is a Maine wildlife bi biologist. He wrote a book, uh, Bald Eagles, Bear Cubs, and Hermit Bill. Yeah. Oh, and he came and you know mm -hmm. talked about his memoirs, talked about Maine wildlife. Very mm -hmm. nice discussion. Uh, we had Kristen McDowell from uh, Wicked Good Elderberry here in town. She came and gave a talk about modern herbalism and kind of tied that back into our uh, community read as well, because uh, midwifery was a lot of herbalism as well back in the 1700s. Um, currently, Elena, uh, my assistant, is finishing up her senior capstone project. And to do that, or what she's doing with that is she is genrefying our collection. 
going through and putting genre stickers on books so that if people want to know where the mysteries are, they can find exactly where the mysteries are. Yes, <laughs> we get that question a lot. And we, you know, you, you can't really uh, subdivide your genres all that much. It like makes placement very awkward. And so you just put your fiction all together and now we're gonna have stickers on all our fiction makes a serendipitous discovery of, you know, what you're looking for on the shelves much easier. And then uh, we've got a couple things that we're looking forward to in the spring. We're gonna have Monica Wood hopefully come and talk about her newest book called How to Read a Book, which is funny. <laughs> it's not nonfiction, it is a fiction title. And is, <laughs> but, is this for adults or kids? That will be for adults. Adult, adult. Yeah. Monica Wood. It's, it's really good. Kind of like it's a really popular. good Oh, okay. Main author. I think she wrote uh, when we were the Kennedys. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. and um, we'll be continuing our yearly programs next year, such as Book Bingo, the Community Read Summer Program, and uh, yeah. There you go. Do, okay. Does the library still get the passes for the design? Uh, we haven't uh, this past year, but I'm going to be uh, re-looking into that this coming. Uh, you know, here because because there used to be botanical garden. We yes, and that was the, the one that got the huge. most attention. So we're definitely going to be looking into the botanical gardens as you know one of those. But um, for the most part, they didn't get used all that much. But the botanical garden one definitely did. I know the gray animal park one. Yeah. When I mean, granted, my kids again, this is 22, but we, but yeah, we'll be looking into having more of those passes this summer. Any else? Any other questions? Can we pass? No. Oh. <laughs> um, I have a question. One of my favorite projects of the library was the um, story stroll. I've, and I've I, would really love, I would really love to see that come back. Yeah. I'm a huge advocate for the story still. I actually, I've got, a, I emailed Dan earlier to see if they have any trails because I'm not sure, like, do they have, do we have any trails like in our rec center area? Oh, no, but you. they did use the They're one sure. at the health center. Yeah, where they yeah so yep. yeah. we were just, we were just wondering if there were other trails well christian christian uh, did just, one did one for um balloon festival yeah. where she just had it around uh, around the the green. west road side of um of the village green okay and i realized that it's i don't think that's an ideal location for something that you want to have up on a long-term basis right um and the last the the previous times we did that they were up for very short periods of time like less than a week yeah, yeah only like two or three days i think for the for the story store, the one yeah, about yeah. how I, no, I, that was up for about a month. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I, put, I know at, I put it up with Diana. Is that the yeah. one that was at the health at center? At the health center. Health and center. it was a great location. And I think they're very happy to do it. And it's the kind of thing that if you do it on an annual basis, then you know, people come to expect it because families can go yeah. there on the weekends. There's no problem parking. They can go in the evenings. Um yeah. and they can do the exercises along with reading the book. I don't know. It's I, I would I would encourage you to it look is at definitely that location. something that uh, the trustees have mentioned and sure. you know, we're looking into doing yeah. again definitely. Jared, I guess I looked at you know the summer read where we had forty kids sign up and ten that finished. Um, do we sort of track them part along the way? So. You know, like after two weeks, you should have twenty who signed up. Twenty. 40. I thought there you said there were forty that signed 40, up for the kids. Forty we ten. signed up for the book bingo. Oh, for the book bingo. Okay. Right, right. But um. But like the uh. The, like you're halfway there, or you're part way. I mean, is there any active so we, encouragement? We, we do have like uh, you come in for every two books, you get a sticker. For every five books, you get a little mini prize, just to kind yeah. of reinforce the. Yeah. You know, you're going to get a small prize before you get your bigger prize. Okay. Yeah, I would just think if we could, if someone could actively say, you know, Carol, how are you doing? Have you have you started your third book yet? Or you know, something to to give them a little more than a parent. But yeah. if they have incentives, if they right, if they have yeah. to. I mean, I think that's a great idea to have incentives to have yeah. mini prizes. Come get your next sticker or something. Yeah. 
so that they don't say, oh, I'm so far behind now, I can't do it, and, you know, which, which, like, I could be guilty of that, you know. <laughs> Whoops, it's too late for me to try to catch up, so. So maybe I wrote down the numbers wrong, but for this kids' summer reading program, they had to read 40 books, and I put 20 completed it. Is that wrong? Was yeah, it 10. 10, 10 completed. completed it. Oh, okay. Yeah, 20 signed up. Okay, oh, 40 signed up. That's okay. where, okay, 20 okay. I missed it. That's 20 right. then, so we had the, the bingo cards. So we, we handed, like, I'm just, I'm not, I don't have an exact number on the bingo okay. cards. That's not okay. as important as we the just history. Kind of yeah. That's just about. Yeah. 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 Okay. Anyone else have any questions? I have over here, like if I read 40 bucks, I want like a five dollar gift card to feel this choice or something coming out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want you an know, ice cream treat at the end of that. Well, yeah. so like I said, we we kind of like get some toys that are right around the ten dollar mark. But yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, you come in at the end of the summer and get like a Rubik's Cube or like a it's cool Lego toy or something like that. Mm -hmm. People seem to enjoy the prizes. Yeah. 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 I'm a fan of the food one of <laughs> Yeah, I think anything that encourages reading, I'm totally in favor of. Yeah. Very much. So that's me too. We appreciate yeah. appreciate what you're doing there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and well, Susan, do you have anything to add from the trustees? Because uh, there's been a fair amount of turnover. There's been trustees. a lot of turnover with the trustees. Do you need um, more trustees? Uh no, I think right now we only have one open spot, okay. which is good. Um, so, but there are, you know, it's taking a little bit to get people up and so I mean, even me, or, I mean, what I started a year ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah quick study. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so we're, you know, we're, people are kind of getting a feel for, for, you know, what we can do to bolster um, library programming and what can we do to be helpful, that sort of thing, and what can we do to um, be in the butt for for Jared over here. Yeah, um, and yeah, so it's I mean it definitely is taking a little bit, but I know we have talked about the story stroll, and I think there are a couple of people um, who might be interested in putting something like that together. Um, Diane has the posts. I, yeah, so right, yeah, there are a couple of people who might be interested in, in doing that. Um, so we'll continue to talk about that. And we are also talking about, um, I think you'll probably hear from us at some point, we're talking about meeting a little bit less. Yeah. Um, yes. it, it's a lot for the group yeah. to meet every month. And the meetings are only about an, an hour. So there, and in last year, because of weather, we missed a couple, and it's not, we don't do a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, I think in a really very cold month. So, yeah. And I think it'd be a little bit more, I, I think the group would work more, more effectively if we actually met a little bit less. So, so instead of like 12 times a year expectation with two potential. Yeah. So we're talking about like nine or mm -hmm. Um But other than that, yeah, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's coming along, but it's, it's definitely been um, a bit of a steep learning curve. Mm -hmm. Is this the, is, is it the trustees where we have a a high school student that's on? Yes. And am I correct that our high school student has graduated? Oh, well, we, have, we have a new one. You have a new one. Okay. Oh, yeah. Who's who's the new one? Wyatt Siders. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's only in a year. You get to keep him for two years, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. He's yes. and he's um he's already participating. Uh, pretty um. Um, in, a, in, a, in a pretty big way. So we just have a lot of questions and ideas to share, and that's been really good. And he was recruited by our previous. That's right. She's very good. Oh, okay. They usually do. They have somebody lined yeah. up to take. Yeah, right. Because give her some sort of ownership um, yeah. of that. Spot. It's great. So that's, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, I noticed that there were a number of area libraries that had regular, say, monthly author talks over the summer. Um, and I know we've had, I know we had Ron Joseph, but I know we've had more of those in the past. So, you know, again, I think that's a really good way um, that the, there was one that was really successful with Paul Blair on last year oh, yeah, yeah. at the Center yeah. of All Seasons. Yeah. That was great. Um, and, but, you know, there's so many authors in the immediate area. 
um, that, you know, it would be great to have a few more. Right, I think folks. that's where right, Monica Woods so came up as, a, as an idea. Um, and there have been some other ideas that have been thrown around. I do think it's been a little bit difficult actually to get response back. And there are some people who have actually said, no, you know, yeah. that's just not a very Lawn, who wrote um, Frozen River. River. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she was not available. Otherwise, we'd have had her. As yeah, she lives in New Hampshire. Yeah. No, no, she lives Frozen River. Woman, I think she lives in North Carolina. Uh, You're thinking about the woman who wrote um, the um, the nonfiction, the diary, or yeah. something of Martha. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ulrich. Ulrich. Yeah. 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 Uh, she lives there. Oh, uh, you're right. You're right. Um, I think Maureen Milliken is going to have a new book coming out. I was. Yeah, she is. Sure. She's about ready. Right. What about Maureen Milliken? Yeah. yeah. She has yeah. the next I mean, sequel in her series, doesn't she? Yeah. I have specifically let her know in the past. You know, anytime you have anything new coming out, we're yeah. more than welcome to. Yeah. You're more than welcome to be here. Yeah. yeah. She's the one. Yeah. And and I think too that um, Renee would be happy to come back, even though yeah, her store is absolutely moved to Waterville. She'd be happy to come back. We've talked to her about that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Great. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Thank you very Keep much. Keep up the good work. Yes. Yeah. 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 Very exciting. Oh, and one other thing about the authors is like, um, so we do generally pay like a like a stipend to the author. So unless they're coming for free, we do have to, yeah, we, we do pay them. So I did go over on my on my uh, budget for uh, programs this year by just a little bit. So, you know, I, I certainly can, you know, have those, authors come but sometimes they're gonna cost a little bit more. Right? You can build that into your budget for yes. next year. Yeah, you build it. But, but also with all of the special yeah. funds that the library has. Yes, you you're absolutely correct. We do have some special come. funds that we can dip into. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, so. a lot of there are a lot of we know that there are a lot of special funds for the libraries. Yeah. So. They're they're also like they tend to be, you know, this is this accounts for this specifically. Right. I know but yes, but there are definitely but... some that are for programming. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, anyway. Okay, good. Okay. Thank good. you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh next up is uh appointments and resignations. Is Jana? Uh she is this the renewal? Uh, no, no, I she let her know, she, but I I did not hear back from her. I did put her on but she was here last last she, meeting, she and was. as she was leaving, somebody was saying maybe she sh shouldn't have. Wasn't it you, Peter, who said maybe she shouldn't have to come back since since she was already here? Somebody said maybe she. I think that was have, Dan. Oh, Dan. Dan. Yeah, I did not yeah. see that. But yeah. so I don't did. know. I don't know if she heard that and thought maybe she didn't have to come back. Yeah, we want to try to assume that next time that she yeah. doesn't want to come in person. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So I move that we table the the appointment of Jana Townsend until next meeting when she can uh, be with us either in person or on Zoom. All in favor, Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. I'll vote yes, four yeses, one absent. Okay, the next um, item is uh, resignation. Mm. Uh, the first one is from Karen McFadden. Um, after much consideration and for personal reasons, I respectfully submit my resignation from the Senior Resource Committee. I will continue my commitment to craft days until I leave to go south in mid-October. It has been an honor to be a part of the Senior Resource Committee. I wish them continued success, respectfully, uh, Karen McFadden. So I move we accept her resignation with regret and send her appropriate uh, thank you and certificate for her work. Second, you second. Certificate for that? Or would Don't we have a certificate for send... um, Laura, do we, don't we send a certificate or do we just send a letter? I think a certificate of appreciation. appreciation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll get that then. Yes. Second that. Uh, all in favor, Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yep. Barbara? Yes. And I'll vote yes, so that's... Uh, four yeses and one absent. Uh, the next one is 
Uh, Mary, I must resign as a volunteer host of the Wednesday game days at the uh, North Belgrade Community Center effective immediately. Kathy has started a new phase in her long-term treatment and I need to be available to help her full time. I did my best, but the only players who ever showed up were friends of mine who were specifically invited. My recommendation to the committee is that if they want to try again to start it in October, you might get traction during the winter months, but the summer would appear to be a long shot. I also think a special event to pull folks in for the grand opening would be required. I will pull by the office to turn in my key at the first opportunity. If you want me to remain in the committee, let me know, but I will not be volunteering for anything in the foreseeable future. Regards, uh, Michael D. Ashland. So I move uh, again that we accept his uh, resignation with regret and send the appropriate letter and certificate to Michael. So we ask Mary, it looks like he's just resigning from being part of the game days and maybe not volunteering right now. Do we ask Mary if they want to keep his keep him on the committee? And then perhaps in the future when his level settles out and he needs to be more active. Uh, Mary? Yes. Yes, I'm, you want to keep him on the committee or well, I, I did tell him that, you know, he was welcome to stay on the committee. And I understand, you know, his um, wife is quite ill. Um, he doesn't know when he'll be able to participate again. So I was going to leave his name on the committee. Um, and I encourage him to zoom in to our meetings if he was capable and participate in that way. Okay, then I will amend my my motion to say that we accept his resignation as the volunteer host of Wednesday game days and send him a note of appreciation as well. Second. All in favor, Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. And I'll vote yes, that's four yeses and one absent. And then we have... Um, I don't see any an application for Shannon. Um, see Shannon here. So the local, is that one we have here? Um, no, that's the one that's I, I appointed her. Okay. So I was going so to know that I appointed her. Oh, yeah. Thank okay. You. So, and she's appointed as the local health officer. Yeah. Once I can retire from that role. Yeah. Uh, she, would you, would you please that. send a notice of appreciation to the existing, <laughs> the now retired <laughs> local <laughs> health officer? Because we do appreciate the local health officer filling in until we could appoint one. She's she's been in the medical field for some years, thirty mm -hmm. years. She used to be the school nurse at Melbourne Center, and so oh, she okay. can so obviously serve residents much better than I would ever think of doing in that capacity. So, and she's and she is a wonderful person. And she let me hug her when I first met her. Oh, <laughs> oh and we're letting her be the local she health officer. She's a, a hugger. personality. Do you know what I mean? Very okay. warm, very friendly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. just just for the record, it's Shannon Whittington. Whittington. That, yes. Whittington for the uh, local health officer. Oh, I did. Yeah. No, I just wanted it okay. to be on the public record. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, next item is the poll location permit. Lorna, do you want to? Yes. Uh, let me if you notice, this this looks a lot better. <laughs> Did you notice that? The yes, we can read, can read it. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, so we received an application for one whole location starting at Route 27 at Guptill Road and heading southwesterly, a distance of 1,200 feet. The facts application was included so that you can take a look at that. Uh, Road Commissioner Jason Stevens has reviewed the application and recommends approval. And it does show you, uh, I think you have a map there so you can take a look. Okay, so. Um, I didn't see that, but if Jason says it's okay. Yeah. yeah. So I, I move that we approve the application for CMP consolidated communication poll permit uh, starting at Route 27 at Guptill Road and heading southwesterly a distance of 1,200 feet. Second. 
Okay. Any more discussion? Anyone have? I don't understand how a pole can go a distance of 1,200 feet. <laughs> That's a long pole. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, so I don't understand. Does that just mean that at some That's point the, in that 1,200 feet, wherever the best spot is, is where yeah. you put it? Or it's 1,200 feet, 1200 from, feet the from the Gupta Road. Road. That's how I read it. 1,200 feet from the okay. Gupta Road. Yeah. All right, that makes sense. Okay. I was like, okay. If there's no further discussion, all in favor, Barbara? Yes. Peter? Yes. Melanie? Yes. And I'll vote yes, so that's four yeses and one absent. The next item is the transfer station equipment purchase request. Um, Kenny, is that you? Well, yeah, but it's Coriander because it's actually... Are you going to stand up and hold this hands? Is, I'm taking some money from Dan. So, <laughs> well, because of course, because the transfer station, we use it on, we, we use it on a weekly basis, twice, three times a week. Um, so, <clears throat> really, what we're needed for is, and something that we've discussed over the years, but we never came to fruition packing open top containers, dumpsters. Because with the skid steer, we don't have reach. So I can only <clears throat> get the first 24 inches of a dumpster that the skid steer actually reaches into, which leaves another three feet that we can't reach. So I can't pack further into it. Over the years, yes, we've had the use of an excavator, which the town does not own. And I'd rather not use it to do that type of stuff because it's not ours, right? So, um, but with the the bot with the um, backhoe attachment, I'd be able to reach all the way across the containers and pack it down, so we can get more weight there. So be able to get another ton or two into an open top bulky waste container if I can reach the other end. Because right now, this one side very close to me is nice and packed. But the far side is not so much. Something that we discussed over the, over the years just never came through. We have the money in the budget, so we think now would be a good time. Corey would be able to use it in, or maybe you would explain what you want to use it for. The oh, cemetery pool and brush and stuff on the cemetery. I mean, we have to pay hollow construction or one of the contractors come and pull brush. So. It has a yeah with the time. Yes. Okay. So yeah. we have two quotes here. Now the, the, the recommendation from the transfer station committee anyway, and myself with oh uh, Bruce, do you want to chime in? I just want to see if he can unmute himself. Oh, he has to call he's, a, he's on the phone. Oh he's on the phone. Oh, we don't need him. Um would be the bobcat. The, the other one I called around, and um, it is the more expensive one, but they are local. It's a bobcat attachment. If there's any warranty in, um, claims, they can do it. The other one, they don't have a dealer in the state. So, oh. as far as warranties go, with that, it wouldn't, should wouldn't that work. work. Uh, yeah, we have to ship it to them, which you'd have to put it on your trailer and drive it down. And drive it to Illinois. To wherever, Illinois. They have, wherever they have a, uh, a yeah. local dealer, they don't have one in the state. So, yeah. Um, and Jordan Equipment, we've been dealing with them for years. They're right up the road in Augusta now, mm -hmm. which is nice. Mm -hmm. So, um, so. And that's the Bobcat dealers, Jordan Equipment. That's correct. Okay. And what's the split between the two departments? Um, half and half. Oh, yeah, we have. No, but, but half and half or? No, no, he, no, it's more like 80 20. <laughs> and do you have the 20% in your budget? Oh, okay. Well, make sure. Um, any, any questions from the board? No, I just looked up what one of them looks like. So stuff like this. You should, have, you should have a photo. I have a COVID, no photo. Oh. So I'm like, I don't know what do these things look like. I'm trying to picture them. Oh. That's what they look like. Yeah. Well, they, they depending on what you're looking at, there's several different types. The one 
The one we I looked up Bobcat's good steer backhoe attachment. Yeah, and it probably tells you one we are sitting on the outside of the outside of the machine, which is not what we wanted to be giving us. But is this it's you know, one of the Very good. Not, not bad. Bruce is not bad. Yeah. Oh, so okay. this one's 15 bucks. No. <laughs> That's not what we want, I don't think. Uh, Bruce, do you have a comment? He can't. He doesn't have to unmute himself. No, I, I'm in agreement with it. And are you in agreement that the Bobcat makes the most sense because of the warranty availability? Yeah, and the, anything we need packs or repairs, it's just down the road. Yeah, okay. All right. So I have a question. Sure. Uh, if you can get like another ton into the containers by using this, yeah. what does that result in in terms of um, dollars? And yes, percent? dollars. Well, we pay $275 a ton, right? Okay. It's $345 just for the transportation, okay, for to just for them to come and pull it, plus $275 a ton. So if I'm sending it out with four tons, I can't do that math in my head. So quite. Sure, but you want to get as, you want to get as, right, right, right. 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 We're saving on the solar we're saving on transportation. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying it's going to pay for itself in six months. It's probably going to be five years. I you know, I can't say for sure. But um, but the other work that we'll be able to do with it around town, Corey, and whatever else we need to do, it's, it's, we have it. It's available. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I move we approve the purchase of a backhoe attachment for the skid steer, splitting the cost between the transfer station and maintenance facilities on an 80-20 split. And the cost uh, that we purchase it, the Bobcat one, at a price of $10,614.47. Did I get it all? Yeah, yeah. I'll second that. Whew. Okay. Any discussion? <laughs> well done. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Barbara? Yes. Peter? Yes. Melanie? Yes. And I'll vote yes. Okay. Good work. Thank you. Good work. Okay. Uh, the next item is remove uncollectible account. Lorna, do you want to? So, um, Mary brought this to our attention. I should go through some information from our system. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Kenny. Good um, So, we have an account in our system that is um, showing that there is a trailer, a, a mobile home. It was removed in 2019, but it keeps appearing on the collection list, but it doesn't even exist. So it's hard for you to hear. Thank you. So there's a, an, an account showing in our system that says there is a trailer it keeps appearing on the collection list, but the trailer was actually removed in 2019. So, so in order to just get rid of it and stop this appearing all of the time and be done once and for all, we would like the board to approve removing this from the system. Do, okay. do I have that right, Mary? Um, yes, it's actually showing up on my foreclosure list. Um, when I took it to Rob, I talked to him about it. It was something that he missed. It was considered to be an on. So it was a trailer owned by somebody who is now deceased, but it was removed. And Nick, um, actually, I took a screenshot um, and Nick had put a note on the account that, um, so I'm not sure why it wasn't taken care of before now, but it, it keeps showing up on my foreclosure list and the property was never owned by the individual. It was just the trailer, which has been gone since 2019. So um, we're just requesting, and it was Rob's recommendation to um, request that the 
board remove it off from the tax rolls. I will make that motion. Okay. So if you looked at this, you would see that note that was put on, and then um, the other sheet you have is the collection list that Mary was right. referencing. Okay. Yeah. So Melanie has made made that motion. Do is there a second? I'll second because I have a question. Okay, you can second. Now you can have a yeah. question. Great, thank you. So this all sounds good because it sounds like we're cleaning up the data in the system of uh, record, which is uh, appropriate. Um, and do we have evidence or do we have things to support this? Because Rob said we should probably remove it, right? Um, do we have other things to substantiate the fact that that trailer is no longer there? Do we have documents or did something anyway? It should show all that shows in the It should show on the uh, property tax card, it should be so, there. Um, there isn't any property tax card for that trailer. It was an on. So the account, the account has been, it's considered an on when a trailer is on the property of somebody else. So the, the oh. account has oh. been deleted for 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24, but it got missed from deletion for 2019 because it, it, it's gone. So, yeah. because it, the account was actually already deleted, this one year was missed for deletion. Okay. Okay. So, Mary, if you're satisfied with uh, cleaning up this record in this way, I am good with it. Okay. Any um, more discussion? All in favor, Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. I'll vote yes. So, it's four yes, one absent. Okay. Our next item is Boston Post Kane Policy Review. Is that you, Lorna? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, um, with the unfortunate passing of the town of Belgrade's Boston Post Kane holder, Arthur Park, it would be prudent to review the existing policy to update the method to search for oldest resident and presentation sections as our town clerk will need to begin the search process. A copy of the current policy highlighted to show the areas where we may update is included for your review and consideration. And Mary brought this um, uh, to my attention because of the passing of our um, holder of the key and that some of these guidelines um, here may be kind of out of date. And if you remember, we just purchased uh, two of the replicas mm -hmm. that could be given out. Um, and Mary, um, you spoke with uh, Dennis today, correct? Yes, I did. So, um, so you yeah, if we just want to go down through some of the amendments, I think only some small amendments and one additional that I caught um, should be made because if the board is going to hand out the canes, well, if we start with the first amendment, I guess that is highlighted. I'm not sure what the page number is. Um, it's uh, place an ad in the local newspaper. I placed an ad um, just yesterday it cost me um, $423 for my required registrar ad. So I would like to recommend that the board remove placing the ad in the newspaper. And what would you substitute that with? Um, to be posted maybe at um, our local facilities to be advertised in our newsletter or to be put on our Facebook site, um, our town website. I would have papers um, available in the office to get the information out. I could provide them to the local churches as well. And the Belgrade Historical Society, I would uh, provide paperwork to them. Um, for submissions, but to put an ad in the newspaper, um, yeah, I just did one for my registrar hours for elections and it was 420 some odd dollars uh, for a small 
two by three. Mm -hmm. okay. So what would be the appropriate wording if we were to strike place to notice in the local newspaper and then in, in other locations where official notices are placed? Could we just strike so pass the local be. newspaper? Yes. <laughs> Make it simple. So possibly placed a notice or notice notices in, in so other to be locations where official notices, notices are placed. In locations, because we're not to say other if we're taking out right and place right, it. true, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Maybe, maybe in parentheses that we say Town of Belgrade's website, <clears throat> Facebook, local churches, etc. Mm -hmm. Local businesses. Yeah. Or do we I mean, but I think if we say in locations, say. in locations where, where official notices, official notices are, are placed, placed, then we're not limiting ourselves to right. things then, that might change over time. Right. And then in yeah. 10 years, Facebook's not there, and we, right. you know, right. you know, we're right. putting something in that may become obsolete. Right. So, um, announcing the search. Okay. We'll be the Jetsons. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. I'm Mary, uh, the next one? Uh, the plaque and lapel pin. So in... Previously, we um, ordered a plaque and we have lapel pins. Actually, we have about 10 of them on hand. But um, it's my understanding the board now wants to change to um, honoring the recipient with a cane. Mm -hmm. So not, not the official cane. A no, a no cane. we have. Go ahead. So would you say to present him or her with a plaque? A replica of the cane and a lapel pin. So, do you yes. still want to do a plaque at the cost of how much were those, Lorna? The the a cane. Lot. Um, between sixty and a hundred, right? Mm -hmm. I think I think the cane. I think the, the cane, cane and the lapel pin. If you lapel haven't pen. seen the cane. They, they've arrived. Would you like to see one of the replicas? Well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're like so nice. They're so we, nice. If we present him or her with a replica cane and lapel pin, would that work? Yeah. We already have a supply of lapel pins right, right. there. Yeah, we, we have about 10 of them on hand. Denny bought a whole pile of them. So um, yeah. we have those on hand. Okay. Um, and then the next one you're, re we're suggesting changing is, uh, the, about the certificates. Well, right now I could pull 10 people that are 90 plus years old. That would be recipients of that. They would, that would take all of the lapel pins. So but we want to give them a lapel pin. Right. It just says mm -hmm. certificates awarded honoring those who are 90 oh, years okay. old. Yeah, who are nominated by the oldest citizen. Because if then if that citizen goes in the pen, then put a cane and a pen. Yeah. So Do you this way, we would give them a certificate saying, congratulations. Like, holy smokes. Your you're day may come. <laughs> yeah. You're not old enough, though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Anybody young? Oh, yeah, only if you don't have nails. Right. You bench nail back here. It's going to make you do funny things with your face. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, while, we're, while we're waiting for the cane, I have a question on the first page where it says. Oh, well, it says on the end, the Boston Post to the oldest citizen. Um, so we would need to yeah, engrave that the town yeah. of Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? Uh, some tiny engraving. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. But it's really pretty. Mm -hmm. Very handsome. But it's nice. I mean, the quality is really nice. So does this say it's a repli replica? No. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, and so is the expectation when the person who's holding one of the replicas passes away that the family would give it back or do they get to keep it? I think they get to keep it, don't they, Mary? They just I did think, that. I wow. think that's the intention 
of um, what you chose to do when you ordered the canes. I, I mean, you had that discussion. But they, they just did it in Rome. So, oh, I don't think I was in attendance. It's really nice. So, so do, that, do we still need to do a lapel pin? No. I mean, well, but then we have 10 lapel pins, so. Well, wait, it's true. You could still give them out until until you don't have any more. Are we gonna, can I just ask a question? Um, I'm sorry, I, I can't find my raise your hand thing on my screen. Oh. <laughs> Um, so, so we're going to continue to buy these canes to give to people. I mean, I just, I know that Sydney has a replica cane and what they do is they present it to the, they actually present the actual Boston cane to the recipient and then they exchange it for the replica after the ceremony. And, but they expect to get that replica back. They only have one replica cane. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was I'm wondering that why somebody sense. would keep it. Why would they keep it? I mean, I mean the family. Why would the family keep it? I think it might be in a yard sale someday. It, it could end up that way. Well, and ours um, was lost for many, many years. The person that held it, which was I think Helen Lundgren, um, ended up in a nursing home. Um, and Denny pursued it um, consistently with the family. And after she passed, they found it in the back of a closet at her home. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's I mean, how we, we actually got it back. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm not particularly sentimental about these things. It seems like you hold the cane while you are the oldest citizen. Right. And once your death prevents you from being the oldest citizen, then somebody else gets the cane. Right. I don't understand why the family would want to keep it if the person is no longer the oldest right. citizen. And I would put that into our, into and maybe, our, right, into it's our rules safe somewhere. replica. It's the expectation that the cane would be returned to the town of Belgrade in the event that's knocked down and now we have a replica to give the new person while we get the other one back. So, right. I mean, I can see that's why we have two, but Right. And I can see the advantage of having a list of uh, having the certificates honoring those who are 90 years old, because then Mary has the ready list of who's among the oldest citizens. Mm -hmm. And right. maybe if, we're gonna, if we request the cane back, maybe we present them with a certificate noticing that they are the recipient of the Boston Post cane. And then the cane itself is returned with the certificate. For right, they get to keep right. the certificate. Yeah. That, yeah, I right. think that's a nice idea. It is a good, yeah. really good idea. You know, because then they have something. You know, is there going through their family history? Right, right. right. I agree. It was the Boston Post cane person for longer. Right, and a, and a certificate can go into an album or sure. have yeah, it on says, like a picture or something yeah. like that. The recipient will retain this honor and cane. We maybe could just do it there as long as the individual lives even though another resident may become eligible. The town clerk's office must be notified if the recipient dies or otherwise refuses or returns the honor. You know, I mean, if we say must be notified and the cane would be returned at that time. Or, yes. You know, at the time the town clerk shall determine the new, the new oldest resident of the town of Belgrade. I think we could just reword that. Wow. And yeah, at, at that time, the family will return the cane and the town clerk shall determine the new oldest resident. Or, right. I mean, it doesn't, it, you know, if we have to, it doesn't have to be immediately. I mean, you don't want to, no, like, you know, hound the family at the funeral, you know, to right. get the cane. The recipient will take right. this honor and cane as long as the individual lives. Um, um, and then at the or whatever, the town clerks will be notified if they die or refuse, and the cane will be returned to the town, to the right. town clerk. Right, that's good. And then at that time, they will award, determine the next oldest one. Yeah. So, good question. So we have the, the Boston Post cane here. Right. And there are 
tabs right next to it that indicate who has received it. Mm -hmm. Do we, I'm not seeing anything in this that talks about that. Uh, right. Oh, right. So there is something that says that, uh, it's, it's in the first paragraph. The name of the honoree to be inscribed on a plaque to be displayed along with the original Boston Post came Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So what we do, what we do is um, when we get ready to um, issue it, I um, have Yankee um, Trophy up in Benton, does those mm -hmm. little tabs for me, and I'll put the date of death on Arthur Clark's, and then the date of issuance on the new recipient, and that gets posted up there as well. Okay. okay. I, I have a question on the on the bottom of the first page, where it says the term residence resident refers to a person who has physically resided at a fixed, permanent, and principal home in the town. So does that mean that, I mean, it almost sounds like they have to have lived in the same house for 25 years, but am I reading that in, a, in incorrectly? I mean, we want them to have lived in a home, but this kind of implies that they have to have lived in the same home for 25 years. I think it, I don't know. I read it. It could be any home. I think it just says, and a principal home. Well, it says fixed, permanent, and principal. So I just want to make sure that we're not, we don't, I mean, I would read that as, to me, it sounds like you have to have lived in the same house. But so you remove the, who has physically resided at a permanent and principal home in the town? Who's resided at a, who has resided, who's, has whose resided home is the, in the principal, their, their home is the principal residence of their, because you're not, you're looking to not have someone who goes to Florida for six months and comes back for six months. Right. So right. Well, here's my question. What if you have someone who lives in town, this is their fixed residence, but they now have to go live at Balsam House because they're unable to stay in Belgrade, but Belgrade is their primary home. primary home. Does that does that change it? And I think we need to look at that. If they so, lived there for 25 years. If they've been in Belgrade 25 years and now, and then they have to move to Balsam House because they can't stay in their home anymore. Do we take the cane away from them? Well, they they may not actually or the family i actually have a person like that is who is the oldest right now um and i'm not sure that that person would understand or if the family would want that to happen to, uh to have them be awarded the cane or if they could just be recognized with a pin and a certificate I have what my oldest person right now is in that situation, lived here for their whole lives, and is currently in a home. Why wouldn't they be eligible? Where no, it's vote? not that they wouldn't be eligible, it's that would mentally be able to, all right, Mary. May not to, mentally be mentally able to, understand exactly right. acknowledge understand well, yeah. but it's still we're acknowledging be, them not, right. not them right. acknowledging right. us right. right it still might to be me, important to the family yeah, yeah. to me that's secondary yeah, yeah. right because I think what Mary's thinking is generally <clears throat> there's a small celebration here at the town office there's a cake the family's invited their photos taken with the Cane, there's a little mm -hmm. presentation. Right. So then, if they're in a nursing home, does the family and the chairperson of the board we bring and a cane? go to the nursing home? Yes, yeah. go to them. Yeah, yeah. go yeah. to them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and it's it's not that it can't happen. It's you know that is the family going to be accepting of that? I'm not sure. Right. Well, well, I know the family. I know the family. So right. yes, okay. if the family says no, we go to the next person. Right. right. Okay. Okay. So but, but I guess I go back to the question of the residence. Right. And can we just say the term resident refers to a person 
who has been a permanent resident of Belgrade for, for, or a year round resident, um, voting resident, I don't know. If they least, move to a nursing home, years. does that change their residence? I guess that's the question. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, we, if it does, if it doesn't, then we need to reword this. Yeah. And I think if we have someone who's lived here for 92 years and they now have to be at a nursing home, they're still sort of like right. what Rome did. The person who received the cane was living at the veterans' home in, mm -hmm. in um, Augusta, but they still are the oldest resident of Rome because they're just living where they need to for assistance. Right. That to me seems appropriate. Right. I, it's a question of how do we word this so it works. Facility of town of Belgrade. So maybe yeah, that's another good. Point. That's right. You know, so facility. okay. Well, maybe maybe so we don't have not. to maybe we don't have to work out the wording here. Maybe yeah, the staff. Staff can work that out and then bring it back and look at it the next time. We can look at it next time. Well, I did, Mary, when are you going to start um, searching for the new? Well, I already system? have. I already have through my voter reg. Um, and I have come across a person who's 98 years old um, and fits all the criteria. Um, and then I have a couple others. I have two or three that are 97. Um, but the thing that I wanted to change was the requirement for the newspaper yeah. right? because of the cost. And the other thing that I want to change is on the last page, not on the application itself, but, um, it's the one that says if the decision is made to no longer display the Boston yeah. Post cane at the town office, it would be placed in the custody of the town of Belgrade historian. So this was commissioned and built the case actually by my husband um, at the request of Denny Ketchell. And it is his wish that this case and Kane remain with the town of Belgrade. Um, we know that there will always be a town clerk. Town clerks have existed forever and that it should not um, be removed for any reason. Um, just so I just like would like to strike that last sentence. Right. Yeah, so I would just agree with that. Um, I actually, that's why I'm here tonight um, because I don't think that an artifact as valuable as the Boston Post cane should ever be turned over to an individual because it gets left in their house, you lose it or whatever. So mm -hmm. I would either say, and I didn't even know maybe there wasn't a historical society when this was written, but if for some reason it wasn't gonna be at the town office, it should definitely go to the historical society and the library, someplace in the town where it can be displayed and, and not an individual having Right. Roll right. Is there anyone here that foresees in the future <clears throat> us not wanting the Boston Post game in the town of us? No. I can understand I why you would it would. <laughs> I think we could just, just strike, strike that. that. Just strike that. And if we get to that point, then we can deal with it 25 years yeah. from now. Right. Um, okay. <laughs> Me too. So the, I guess okay. the uh, we did say, are we clear here that we're not presenting the cane? Because the policy says they get the cane. Then when we get over to presentation, we say we will present them with a replica cane. Are we, should we maybe put under policy? It is, it has been, the, you know, the select board has, or due to the value of the cane, um, elected to display the original cane in the town office and a replica will be presented. So it's real clear. Because when you read this first part, sounds like they're going to get the cane. I, I like what you said. And we could just add that in as a sentence just to clarify that they're not getting the cane. They're getting the replica. I guess I, I read mean, the first sentence, Carol, as the history. I the first yeah. paragraph under policy. And maybe it shouldn't be policy. Maybe it should actually be history. History. 
because Denny is giving a history and I know that he is still working on this as he told me today and has uh, some other things that he would like to add to bring to the town of Belgrade. Yeah, history or background. History, or... something, just so that, because to me, policy sounds like they're getting the case. So yeah. change it, that's fine. Yeah. Just so that we're clear. But this also says, the policy part says if they move from the town. Right. They're yeah, both so eligible. So the policy. So and that would negate all your people who go to it. Right. But if you call it background then or history, then that's how it was, you know, that's how it was established exactly. at the time. And it says yeah. these are the protocols. Here's the protocol. Mm -hmm. So then we can have our procedure and, right. you know and change things from okay. there. So can we do we have enough information now on what we're looking to accomplish and make sure that it gets reworked for our next meeting? Well, but Mary wants Mary at least wants a vote on the well um, the notice of the newspaper. Yeah, and and we can wait on this. It can wait till the next meeting. I mean, I've done my research, and then you know after we get everything changed and um, then give it out to civic organizations, to the churches, to the historical society, so that they have it. Um, yeah, it can wait to the next meeting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. But we are in agreement, I think, that we're moving the newspaper part. Right. Absolutely. Right. So hopefully, Mary, you are consoled in knowing that part. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that you're not, you're not place a notice in the newspaper. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. We, okay. But but the other question is, I mean, this is um, upon his or her death or move, the cane would be awarded. So. Well, if they move to Florida to live with their daughter, they're no longer right. But if they move to a nursing home, I mean, do we need to specify that? That's one thing. If that maybe if they move out of state, or I don't know. Yeah. You know, they, they actually when you move to a nursing home, you don't lose your residence. No, right? you don't. You unless, don't. Well, unless then you know, there's all these rules that you have to be has to be decided that you, people can go to a nursing home. And get, you know, be there for six months and then come, and then come back. Right. Correct. Right. Yeah. So uh, that's a tough one. Okay. Okay. So everyone knows what our intent is. Lorna, yeah. will you make it so? <laughs> is that what it hurts? <laughs> Who's you say? Somebody make it so? Make it so. Captain <laughs> Stewart. Okay. Are we ready to move on? Yes. Okay. Uh, do we have any other business to come before the board before we get under other business? Um, no, I, I can add this under town manager report, but I did uh, remember I was having difficulty getting any information from the state on the property tax fairness credit. Oh, yeah. yeah. The number of um, people, etc. So this gentleman that I've been emailing all of this time faithfully, who's not responded, finally, finally responded and said, well, I'm not the one you need to talk to. <laughs> oh my God. So I know. So he did give me an email of the person I was supposed to reach out to, which I did, and he replied promptly. Okay. So um, just to give you that information, tax year 2022, there were 214 really? uh, people with a Belgrade residence address, and the total credit was $126,972. And in tax year 2023, there were 210 applications and total credit $139,877. So it does give us some idea, right? So then we have to look at if we're going to get a, give a credit to have some idea of how, what that volume is going to be. Right. Yes. So I'm sorry, I didn't get the 22 figures. Uh, 214 and 126,972. 
And we get that money from the state because they're giving the credit. Am I correct? We don't get any money from the we state. We don't get the money. No. This is what the oh. state is giving. Oh, so the state's giving the them state so they can pay them. them. And then the way the ordinance would be written, the town, if they if they can show us that they the get, get that them. they got the property tax bearers credit from the state, the town would uh, rebate them um, a percentage of that amount they got from the state. You can okay. do, All right. That's you can do a high credit. percentage. I think it, the ordinances I've looked at are right around the 50, 40 and 50%. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it depends upon what the board wants That's to gonna put. going to take some thinking and some there. budget yeah. thinking. I figured it's probably about 100000 you'd need to budget for. Yeah. For the, the sense. first year. Yeah. Okay. I, I've been working on that to bring to you. So okay. um, that came through. I wanted to get you that. Okay. Anything else under other business? Okay. Let's start with warrants. Okay, I move we approve warrant number 109 in the amount of $28,185.21. Second. All in favor, Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. I'll vote yes, so that's four yeses, one absent. I move that we approve warrant number 110 in the amount of $19,269.75. I'll second that. All in favor, Melanie? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. And I'll vote yes. So that is four yeses, one absent. I move we approve warrant number 111 in the amount of $2,223.29. Second. All in favor, Barbara? Yes. Peter? Yes. Melanie? Yes. And I'll vote yes. So that's four yeses and one absent. I move we approve warrant number 112 in the amount of $1,751,377.27. That's because of Scott Ferguson. <laughs> is, there a, is there a second? I will second that. Okay. Is there any discussion? <laughs> <laughs> I should have I should have helped the check and give it to you. You should see our warrant. Oh uh, yeah, I know right. <laughs> Can I bounce back to the last one, Carol? Just a quick warrant one eleven is I have this this way. I was thinking this was part of this one. But why don't we wait with spectrum? Whoops. The that I believe the warrant you're looking at is the old credit card through Andrew Scoggin. It did not get paid, and then we could not okay. uh, get access because we changed treasurers. Okay. So we finally were able to get to them, get a bill, but by that time it was late. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. we did. We kind of did a, a special warrant War. just to get that get out that as quickly as we could. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, anyone have any questions on this warrant number one twelve? Okay. So, I just I just want to clarify that. So, we did a special warrant on that one that was passed in the three thirty eight. And that was the one that Lisa had said would be available for people to sign when they came in. So it should then show up as well on this one if there was a separate warrant that was already signed and the check was issued. But this is 111. Right. So that's what, so is there another warrant that just has that 338? That no, it's the whole, is... I believe the one that you're looking at is all, uh, Credit card. Page Every, more those are that's to... all credit card charges. Okay. If you look at page one and look at the top mill, uh zero zero nine two zero Elon Financial yes. Services, okay. and you don't see any other company, no other vendor. Okay. Because so it's all that all credit card. Okay, because I saw she had said some of the three thirty eight. So these other ones. So thank you for clarifying. You're welcome. That's okay. right. Spot one that. Okay. Back okay. To the Back to the warrant number 112. 
So it, it's painful, right? Because we have two I babies. I sculpt. Right? Oh my God, right? my gosh. <laughs> and there's no way to get around it. That's the way it is with these two things. Because the big hitters are the installment for the school payment of 610, 190.58. Yeah. And the other one is for Kennebec County tax, which is $193,073 even. Yes. So we budgeted for this. Yep. Yeah. It hurts, <laughs> but I don't know any other way around it. I don't know any other way around it. Does anyone in the room know any other way around it? <laughs> happy to answer any questions you might have. I, I have none, Scott, that I could ask that would be relevant to this payment. It would be really looking forward how to do, how could we do something that might minimize or reduce. Well, one of the things that we are doing is we're reaching out to legislators and local municipalities to uh, address the state because um, the, uh, they passed a public law for medication assisted treatment for inmates, which in my opinion goes beyond the scope of what a jail should be. So um, that alone is costing us a million dollars. It's so costing us how much? Huh? You a said million dollar, million. million? Okay. Yeah. Unfunded Just, mandates, yeah, right? Unfunded so? mandates. So um, one of the things um, that we, we overran our, our jail budget by about a million last year. Um, however, we did put forth a supplemental request, um, which the governor took out and then put in in her own way in the wrong fiscal year um, and in the wrong fund. Um, but anyway, we got $956,000 back based on the work that I did with the jail administrator. So that's gonna partially cover the overrun from uh, you know what I would consider an unfunded mandate. Going into the biennium, we're submitting a million dollars in each year of the biennium um, to uh, cover uh, medication-assisted treatment, mental health, and medical, because the medical is just skyrocketing. Uh, you know, even with what I would consider our population being fairly small, we average probably 150 um, a day. Um, there's still we're we're dealing with mental health, um, substance abuse, and mm -hmm. that's what the that's what we're dealing with. We're we're almost like a Riverview, yeah. If you think about it, yeah. um, you know, it's to me, like I said, it's not what incarceration is meant to be. We're not we're not a treatment facility. Um, you know, law enforcement is another expensive thing. Um, you know, so those between the jail and the sheriff's office, those are the two biggest components of our budget, which probably accounts for um, uh, the jail's about half and the sheriff's office. Is, so we're talking probably about 65, 70 percent of our budget are just those two departments. You know, and, um, you know, and then two. We're trying to educate people on what the county actually does. You know, we have deeds, we have probate, uh, we've got the DA's office. That's a whole nother mess with the state because the DA actually works for the state, but we're picking up all the bills. So uh, it's a county government is an interesting dynamic. I've been there, I'm going on three years, and I just shake my head at the stuff that goes on there. Um, eight elected officials I'm dealing with. Some of which are department heads mm -hmm. makes it extremely challenging because they answer to nobody. So um, it's interesting. I have a, I laugh. I got a, an audit report on uh, county government management from RKO from 1999. You read it today. You think you were talking about today mm -hmm. all the findings that they had in there. So I always laugh when I look at that because um, the challenges haven't changed. Mm -hmm. so. But, um, you know, one of the problems that we faced was uh, wage parity, which we addressed in the last budget and everybody went crazy. Um, you know, I think you got to be careful when you read what's in the paper because they don't always get it right. Because um, one of the things that I looked at 
I keep a spreadsheet of my tax bills and the county is about eight or eight to 10 percent of the overall tax bill. So when you see like the county is going to increase by 44 um, percent, which really wasn't true, that didn't happen. But for me personally, when I looked at last year compared to this year on the tax bill for me, and I live here in Belgrade, it was like $80. That's, that was my increase. I, had, I asked people in other towns what their increase was. Augusta was like 40, maybe. So, yeah, that's, you know, that's significant. I won't deny that. But you're not talking to hundreds and hundreds of dollars like you would see with a school yeah. or even a town for that matter. So the county is a small piece of the tax bill. But the problem is that I'm finding there is a lot of things were not addressed. And wage parity is a big one. We were losing people left and right. So we sort of fixed some of that. And then unfortunately, the jail took the budget committee on a jail tour. And everybody, you know, started, oh, the poor guards. And they actually doubled their increase this year, which that was not what the commissioners had proposed. That was on the budget committee themselves. So that was another big chunk was, I don't know, I, in dollars, I'm not quite sure, maybe 20 to 60,000, but um, wasn't what we had anticipated. Is, is there any way that we as a municipality can take advantage of services that, I mean, are there any services that are underutilized that the county provides or is everything so transparent in terms of, you know, jail and sheriff and DA? And... Um, well, I think EMA is a good one. Oh. Um, you know, emergency management. We um, did sponsor what we call the MV3 program. And I'm sure you guys uh, may or may not know Dr. Tim Pei. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and he's really spearheading that. And I personally believe that's an extremely valuable program. Um, you're putting doctors on accident scenes, which right. their skill set's entirely different than uh, a paramedic. Mm -hmm. And what's what's happening there is it, I think is cutting down on emergency room visits and they can treat and release even um, at the scene of an accident. So that's that's a good one. Um, you know, uh, the problem is is we, you know, register deeds. There's only so much they are going to do probate. Right. You don't really want to go there. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, then we've got the jail and the sheriff. Um, but EMA, I think, can help with a lot of emergency planning in local municipalities and things like that. So, um, you know, and then, too, uh, when we had some local meetings through EMA, there's been a lot of talk about code enforcement, um, animal control, things like that. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, uh, I know Anthony's in Winthrop, but we're still having those discussions about collaboration between county and local municipalities um, in those areas. And I think it warrants further discussion. Um, another positive thing is, is MMA actually invited um, us as county people to their legislative meetings that they're gonna have. Um, my mantra has always been until MMA, MCCA, NSA, Main Sheriff's Association, start working together, the state's going to run us all over and just push itself down on us. So um, that's what we're trying to do. The special program that Tim pays heading, yeah. is that funded through for how long? Um, the, the funding, I did a projection on it. He'll make it through the end of this fiscal year. Um, but after Which is that, until July 1st, right? Yeah. Until the, the first first yeah. yeah. So um, we're coming into our budget season now. So um, the, uh, we used ARPA to kick the program off. Um, the budget committee partially funded some of it. So we're trying to ease the, the, um, the cost burden as we move into the program. Um, but uh, it, it will end up being picked up by the general fund um, after the ARPA money is gone. And is that another year or is that this year? That'll be in fiscal year 25 or yeah, 20, yeah, 25. fiscal year six. Yes. Fiscal year 26. Yeah, right. 
So we'll have another year before we'll have to yeah. bite yeah. that bullet. Yeah. And it's not going to be a huge chunk. I, it might be like a hundred thousand or so, something like that. It, you know, you're not looking at like a million or something like that because um, the infrastructure is already there. And what's really nice about this program, he gets a lot of supplies from Maine General mm -hmm. and Delta. So they're they're all also contributing to this program and giving him what he needs to to uh, do the treatments. So it's not like there's there's cost. Now, if he uses something, they look for reimbursement on it. But if he doesn't use it, you know, they just give it to him. So, so it's and pretty it's, good. You, I mean, you should actually, I'll, you know, if you're interested, I'll have him come here and talk. It's yeah, uh, it's, it's a good program. Yeah, it is. I I went to Waterville uh, Fire Department where he basically, and the, the other aspect of this program is the training aspect that the doctors give the paramedics. And what they did um, up there is they went through cases, live cases, and they critiqued what was done and what might have been done better. And what was written, I was extremely impressed with the knowledge of the EMTs in the audience. I mean, stuff I've never heard of before. And, yeah. uh, and then Dr. Pei interacting with them, talking about, well, okay. Um, there was one particular case where um, there was just uh, very little eye movement. They, they didn't pick up on that, but the doctor knew exactly what it was, and they were able to treat it. So it's that type of training that I think is really valuable for, um, uh, you know, for the EMTs getting from a real doctor. And interestingly enough, we actually have doctors moving to Maine to be part of this program. That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. so. Do you foresee a collaboration with maybe the hospitals helping fund part of that because it cuts their costs yeah, with I, ER? Yeah, I think um, that's one of the things I've been talking to Dr. Pay about. And, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, that's that's something we're going to have to pursue with them mm -hmm. um, to sort of help with the program. But, you know, again, you know, we all know ER visits are expensive. And if you know he needs to start collecting the data, right? Which he's doing now because I basically told him you need to uh, you know justify this program. And it was very interesting. He's got statistics on every town, what the type of cases were, how many visits were made, and that type of thing. So um, yeah, if you know, I can mention they can contact Lorna and maybe come in and give you guys yeah, a that would be a great. Review. I, I can yeah. tell you that they do respond to a lot of our major calls in Belgrade. We've had them multiple times and it's, it's a great resource and they, you know, they do come with a lot of, a lot of, a lot more equipment than Delta has on their rig and a lot more um, medical supplies. So it, it does for critical calls. It's, it's quite crucial and it's, you know, it's something that we really somehow, some way need to fight to keep it, somehow fund it and keep it going. Uh -huh. yeah. He's coming in a mid-sized SUV. He's like freaking Superman oh, showing yeah. up on the scene. I, yeah. I applied yeah. for uh, with King for congressionally directed spending uh, to get a bigger vehicle and one equipped with you know the uh, yeah. refrigeration equipment and everything and they didn't go. But what amazes me is they funded a project, um, this is King, um, that is nowhere. We actually had given them ARPA money and we had to pull it back because two years they sat there and did nothing. But they got congressional directed spending. <sighs> Made no sense yeah. to me, you know? So um, we'll keep trying to get grants and things like that, um, you know, to, to help fund this and other programs. Um, that's one of the things I've asked the commissioners. I said, I really would like a grant writer because there's a ton of money out there. Um, yeah. We just don't have the resources to go after it. And did you look at at Representative Golden's money as well? Because his yeah, less well, money, lesser projects, but, you know. Yeah, I, um, the problem I'm faced with is I've got aging facilities. The courthouse is over 200 years old, the jail is not much newer, mm -hmm. and the hill house is a wreck. Yeah. So I've been there, I've had four water-related vents in three years where it's flooded from upstairs right down to the basement. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, thank God for ARPA because I'm dealing with deferred maintenance. Yeah. And nothing had been done for, I, you know, parking lot was, I don't know, 25 years old and 
what a mess. Uh, so that's part of the challenge. I and I don't have the resources right now to direct at um, uh, the grants, uh, but EMA does a pretty darn good job of uh, the grant funding. Yeah. And a lot of what they do is grant funded. And I know Angela Molino, who we just hired from Androscoggin, she's um, she's very good at grants. She used to be a grant writer with the state. Mm -hmm. And um, she's trying to get grants for the MD3 program and other programs mm -hmm. related to EMA. Yeah. Okay. So we're trying. It's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone have any other questions for Scott? No, thank okay. you so much. Yes, thank you. Anything else on the warrant? Any questions on the warrant? So I did, I asked Corey a quick question. This is what I was asking him because we paid 687.50 to have the old landfill bush hogged. So I checked with Corey to see where we have a bush hog or why we weren't doing the bush hogging. And it's because of the steepness of the snow. Oh, okay. So they needed a bigger bush hog, which is why we hired that out. And then the late fee interest fees on page three on a credit card, that should be the current credit card, correct? But we paid yes. $125 in late fees. Yeah, I did see that. Well, there's an interest, yeah. Mm -hmm. Late goes 35. Yeah. Is that the same problem with not so having it, having it still in um, Nick's name and not transferred to? Well, no, I think I think we're still we were still getting a paper copy. I don't think it was coming through email. Um, but there were some there were some bills that were late, not paid. So if we can just maybe reiterate what this uh, we really don't want the piece of the municipality. Is that now corrected with Lisa here? It is. Okay. Well, that a lot of detail. Yeah. Right. Yes. I, Good yeah. enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because like, we didn't have a lot of neck. I know at one point we did, and then yeah, we definitely got it under control. Up, mm -hmm. So, yeah. I don't know that this is going to be, this was Nick's issue. Yeah. This should be stuff that's happened since he left. And then on page six, the Main Street DM. Five dollars and forty nine cents for for power for the dam seems extremely low to me. Is it trickling? Page six. I'm looking. It's right in the top. Main Street Dam. Power. Well, the dam's been pretty open. Maybe they haven't been lifting it up and down. <laughs> I know it's the first item that we have under Central Main Power page on six. on page six. Very top of the page. Very top of the page. At least Mine is on page five. Uh, near the bottom. I see it. 549. You're out to pull the yeah, invoice. I was just I was like 549. I thought just the just for having the electrical there it was 22 something a month. So I was like 549 seems like it's not accurate. Either that or something like get overpaid one month and underpaid the next. Okay, so we have electricity for Smithfield North Delgate Community Center at two dollars and two cents. Uh, weird. No. As far as I'm concerned, the energy billing screwed up. Yeah. Oh, me too. I've never seen them undercharge us for anything. So I'm like, our bills fell. Yeah. The electrical for North Delgate Community Center because that doesn't make any sense. We know they didn't lose just two dollars worth of electricity in a month. Um, so prior, I'm looking at 508 Smithfield Road, the two dollars and two cents. So prior balance was 38507, payments received 576, yeah. balance forward negative 19177. Right. So, yes. Oh, and then CMP delivery and supplier. So the total due ended up being two dollars and two cents. Right. There was no payment. Was no right. payment. So um and let me look and see. I didn't see the but I'm saying you know but, what I'm overpaying me. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm but, guessing that the five dollar one is the I'm gonna guess it's the same. I didn't come across it. Yeah. 
It must be so we probably didn't do the kid for them. Or sometimes they pass, they pass in the mail too, depending on when you pay them. But Okay. But they should be all caught out, right? Yeah. Okay. Ready to vote? Okay, I'm ready to vote. Thank you. All right. Well, in favor? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. And I vote yes for yes. One of one absent. I now move that we pay uh, warrant number one thirteen in the amount of fifteen. Excuse me, fifty-eight thousand two hundred and two dollars and eighty-seven cents. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, Barbara? Yes. Peter? Yes. Melanie? Yes. And I vote yes, four yeses, one absent. And our warrant number, I move we pay warrant number 114 in the amount of $21,382.42. Second. All in favor, Barbara? Yes. Peter? Yes. Melanie? Yes. I vote yes, four yeses, and one absent. And that takes us to the town manager report. Uh, the candidate forum was held Tuesday, September 24 at 6 p.m. Uh, here at the town office, we had 13 attendees in person and then another eight to 10 on Zoom. It's that was the great. most well attended. Yeah, <laughs> and it. I thought it was really great. Everybody was very respectful. Um, answered the questions well. Um, Gina, I thought it. Gina, Gina, Gina did a great job. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just um, run so smoothly, mm -hmm. and it was just so nice that people had an interest in Kate. It was. Uh -huh. I loved that. Um, so it was a wonderful opportunity for the public to meet and hear from the candidates and a big thank you to Regina Coffins for planning and moderating once again. Uh, Treasurer Lisa Klein and I have spent the majority of the last two weeks meeting with department heads and working on the 2025 initial budget information for the budget committee. Uh, budget committee meetings are scheduled for October 7, 8, 21, and 22. The newsletter's off to the printer with the digital version available via our website and posted to Facebook page. Thank you to select person Barbara Allen for approving the newsletter. And I actually went to Winthrop today and picked up the printed version and we got that bulk mail out. So it's in the mail right. today. Right. <laughs> right. Um, it, may, it took four trips to the post office because they wouldn't take it because I didn't have the right paperwork. You do everything online. Right. You you pay, you do everything online now. They don't let you do it in there, but you still have to bring paperwork to prove you did it online. It online. Yep. <laughs> it was exciting. I got steps in. Um, Fire and Rescue has acquired the new pickup truck approved at the Ooh. September 17 meeting. It's really pretty. I saw it cool. sitting out front. Um, facilities has acquired the new heavy duty trailer also approved on September 17. Facilities continues to work on trying to get estimates for Dalton properties. I believe Corey told me this morning that he's just waiting on um, estimates to come in. So apparently he's wrangled someone. <laughs> so that's good news. Uh, the meeting with Dwight Dowdy of DEP, uh, referencing the salt triangle and the water treatment uh, plans has been moved to this Friday, October 4. The Comprehensive Planning Committee has set the is date. Is 7.30? I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, it is, yeah. Uh, the Comprehensive Planning Committee has set the date of November 20 as the public input meeting to be held at the Center for All Seasons. More details will be announced um, as those uh, get finalized. A work crew from safety services and supply will be scheduled to work on the Bartlett Road Railroad. Scott is happy to hear that. Uh, crossing to make it safer after reviewing pictures taken of the site and the need to extend the approachments on either side. Scott had been trying to get Luke 
I think that's to be. Bless you. Who was our contact? Oh, bless you for the safety company. Um, but he wasn't really doing anything. And so I took a ride out and took those pictures and then emailed Luke and said, You absolutely have to do something because somebody's going to get seriously hurt. They and, have, there have been trucks there for the last two or three days doing just even on the weekend. I'm yeah, like, okay. I don't know how they left it that way. I know. I went over it and thought, just the way I normally do, I'm like, yeah, it was bad. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, when I drove over it, I mean, I was like so slow because I didn't yeah. dare yeah, get any slow. speed. I was afraid I'd get launched. Like, I yeah. told the guy on the phone, I'm like, it's like Duke's a hazard. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, yeah, yeah. that's well, what it would be. I drive an F two fifty when you go over it. They'll, you know, have yes the heavy duty suspension and just shove you right over. Yes, yes, yeah. dangerous. So, so hopefully that's going to be taken care of quickly. Um, Rock Pond Road culverts were replaced. They were in mm -hmm. dire shape. I mm -hmm. we sent pictures out to you all. Mm -hmm. Um, and although it was an inconvenience to have the road shut down, the maintenance was much needed. Yeah, absolutely. As you saw. Uh, on the radar, Dalton Properties, uh, 2025 budget, town meeting 2025, water trustee, we still need one. Uh, Short-term rental ad hoc committee, which I think you took care of tonight. ARPA expenditures, the CDS grant for the new fire station, Center for All Seasons updates, uh, a plan and funding. The employee handbook and also to continue reviewing uh, policies as we come. Okay. okay. Question about ARPA. Yes. All your funds are obligated. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Because um, they need to be obligated by the end of the year. September. But the thing yeah, I'm worried about is, yes. you know, if anything should change in Washington, they might call that right. I back. know, right? Yeah. So they're know. all um, they're all spoken for, and that's already been uh, recorded yeah. in the system. Yeah. <clears throat> so the okay. solid waste report. Are we gonna bring that up in a meeting? Um, I'm working with Kenny on that, and and part of his response when we talked about that the other day was that the gal that was there was new, young, uh, newly hired, and she was, they weren't open. He was in doing his normal stuff of cleaning things up and what he does when they're not open, taking care of things that he can't take care of when they are open. Um, and so he was doing these things, his normal routine but she was writing him up for all of these yeah um so he was and and rightly so he was a little upset by that but um he and i did talk and we will get together again to review where we are with it and absolutely um have the one of your board meetings and i'll have kenny come in and we can have a discussion yeah, yeah. Well, I had held on to the three, five, and ten year transfer station plan. And I yes. put a note on here that Ken had noted the drainage around the compact was sloppy. Yes. Which I was like, what's the stuff to do? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Good point. Yeah. Okay. Quickly, uh, there was a mention of the new trailer, which I'm excited for the crew. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We had talked about selling the old one at some point. I think. Yes. Corey hasn't done anything with it yet. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then we the did pull the plate and we obviously got a new plate. Excellent. And uh, the other thing, and this is just maybe a housekeeping thing, but I think Dwight's over at DOT, right? Not what did I put? DEP? Oh, oh yeah. no. Just, yeah, he is DOT. Yeah. That's my error yeah. typing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else anyone has? Um, the envelope for Andy. Yes. Yep. I have it in the. It's on the counter. Do you want it? Yeah. I, I don't know if I saw When is that service? I wasn't clear. Uh, Thursday afternoon. This Thursday? Yeah. At what time? I believe it's two o'clock. There was an email late. Today at some point I saw it. Oh, if we scroll to see. Yeah, because I was I was yeah, confused. Yeah, it's at so. two o'clock. Uh, Thursday at two. Plan one. It's in plan one. It's by the tree line. I think. 
plan one. Is that the old part? I don't oh, know. plan one. It must be the oldest part, right? Of the a crop by the historical society. History yeah. house, or it's right across some historical building. Yeah. It's a very okay. it's, it's the closest to the to the uh, Christie's. It's between the beginning of the cemetery and the Cathedral Pines is plan one. Okay, so it's across the street from the history house, not correct. To it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then did you find out was there any damage at the Quaker Cemetery from the car that apparently didn't stop? I, I was, the, was the gold chains that kept the back? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I tried, I, he sent me some pictures and I tried to send them to you, but they were too large. Yeah. They got kicked back. Yeah. Um, I've it did not a lot lately with this last update with Apple or both sent. Is that? I is it, yeah, you know, when my when people purchase a vehicle, I always do a photo and a video. And it would not let me send the video yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. Kept telling me my file was too large. I'm like, it's a 30 second video. I do them all the time. But this last update seems to have fucked up some more stuff. So it didn't look like the I didn't see that because there's a really big, big if, you, there. if you come off Cemetery Road um, to the stop sign, you look straight ahead. So the gate, the gate would be like this, and then you've got the um, the yellow chain rope. So if you went through the gate, but you kind of veered to the right, there's this really, really big stone, mm. but it did not look broken. To me, um, you could see where the ground was all dirt, where the grass had been torn up, but it had been uh, smoothed out. I'm sure Corey and his crew did that. Um, a lot of the chain and and all of that was down on the ground, so it may be it may be some of the um, like fencing type mm -hmm. posts around, right? That may may be damaged. I haven't. I haven't seen him for you long enough today to yeah. to talk to him, but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened yet. Okay. Well, somebody ran through the stop sign. Yeah. yeah. For some reason. Oh, well, I I know, but I don't. I mean, I don't right. know the whole what? right. I don't yeah. know. Were there charges filed? No, oh, I don't know that. I don't. Were they? Have you heard? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, my question. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll um I'll find out what I can for additional information. I'll push that out to you all. Um, maybe if I try sending uh one picture at a time, that might work because right. there were like three or four. Yeah, and so I, I just try. forwarded it to well, you. But I know more but secondary and trying to send it via like to an email, and Apple was still like. Nope, nope, nothing to do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry. Yeah. Here's your photo. Uh, let me go for you, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, if there's no other business, I move we adjourn at 9 09. All in favor, Melly? Yes. Peter? Yes. Barbara? Yes. I'll vote yes. Good to see you, Bruce. Yes. Y'all have a good night. All right, thank you. Glad you're feeling better, Bruce. Yes. Hopefully I'll be in person for the next one. Okay. How's Keep your knee doing? Pretty good. I start weight bearing the end of a week, so. Oh, 